is about to enter its fifth year. And that's all thanks to you. If you're new here, let me fill you in. Xbox Zero is a platform for the Xbox community with best-in-class forums, a kick-ass Discord server, and of course, XboxZero.com, chock full of the latest news, reviews, and more, all focused on your favorite platform, Xbox. It's every Xbox fan's gateway to the best of Xbox Zero. Our incredible podcasts listened to in over 50 countries across the planet, our own digital store for games and codes, our merch store for the coolest of Xbox threads, and of course, Day One, where you can track, rate, and discuss your favorite games on Xbox Game Pass. Xbox Era is built for you, and it's completely funded by you. If you value having a publication truly focused on your preferred place to play, you can support us directly via Patreon. Just head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. You get cool swag and awesome perks, and we get to keep doing what we do. Become a part of the best Xbox community on the internet and help us build the next five years of Xbox Era. Thank you for your support. The team at Xbox Era haven't been to journalism school and have zero credibility, so they're borrowing some of mine. Xbox Air is only made possible by those of you who truly believe. The Xbox Air team would like to thank all our patrons, but especially our executive producers. Assassin Entertainment, Crow at 56, Jordan White, Corkenstein, Kevin S., Law Pell, Not Jack, Top, and Torn Raptor. You guys give us hope. Fear can make you a prisoner. Hope can set you free. You guys are fucking awful. Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 205 of the Xbox Era podcast. We're here to talk about all of the latest in gaming from across the industry, but overall, we're focused on your favorite platform, Xbox. If you love what we do, you can support us directly by heading to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era or by becoming a YouTube member right here. And as always, please keep your eyes peeled on XboxZero.com for all the latest and greatest in gaming news. As per usual, I am joined by Special Nick. What's going on? I beat you this time. <laughs> I really needed to cough like through the last 10 seconds of me speaking there. And I was like, no, I've got this nailed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and Jesse's here as well. Hi, Jesse. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, been a bit of a crazy day. Managed to call in a few favors. Um, obviously, no, it's not really Morgan Freeman that voiced that executive producer shout out, but we hope that you found it moderately amusing. Yes, we used AI. Oh. Uh, we did it mostly as a joke. It will be just my voice next week, but we, we thought it would be funny. Um, <laughs> it was on camera. That is AI that produced that. I used a, the mm. freebie version and just had to, because it kept going, we recognize this browser. So I kept switching my VPN from country to country so that I was a different IP to just get each blurb. And apologies, Croat or Croat56. I couldn't get Morgan to say the name in a, in a perfect way, but mm. um, it, it made me laugh. So we hope you enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, yeah, AI and gaming is bad. Don't hate us. Anyways, um, how are you all doing? How have you had, had a good week, Nick? Have you had fun? Have you had a nice time? I'm really sore. I'm really sore. sore and tired. So after we had our community uh, gaming community night, game night last night, that was really good fun. So after all of you left, uh, myself, Corkenstein, and oh my God. The third name escapes me. Started with A, was playing with us and played with my son as well. We jumped into Fortnite mm. and we played a round of Fortnite and got a victory royale first try. I suspect there was wow. a lot of bots in the match. Mm. I suspect there was a lot of bots in the match. Aboris, yes. Thank you, Assassin Entertainment. Aboris. Good for you. Um, and yeah, we played a little bit of Fortnite. And then after that, I had to jump off because I had to do landscaping at my oh. house. So I was I was moving rocks around all day and digging up dirt and then salting it because I wanted to kill all the dirt. And then put 
more is that to stop stuff growing or to stop slugs yes. or what stop stuff growing yes. Oh, okay, okay yes um and then put the rocks back put more rocks just moving rocks back and forth because i'm trying to change up everything at the house and oh my god i'm so sore so sore mm-hmm. but yes i'm not normally a landscape gardener or handyman or any of those things so my body never deals well with that sort of stuff. Too much, too much like physical Work. activity. You need more mm. sedentary yeah. things to do. That's why Fair I hate enough. the gym. That's why I hate the gym. No one likes the gym. Don't I like gym it. people. I hate the gym. I want to quit the gym. <laughs> I want to quit the gym. <laughs> I want to. We want to quit the, the bank. <laughs> I want to quit the bank. <laughs> um. Oh man! What about you, Jesse? You been up so much this week? You've been having a nice time. Um, nice time mostly. It? Did you enjoy the community game night? I did. Um, it was the first time I had played Halo multiplayer in like two years, maybe. Been busy. Not that I dislike it. Just been very busy. I uh, was never a big Halo multiplayer. Was always way more into the PVE side of things with the franchise. Um, did okay. It's playing on mouse and keyboard, so I definitely had an aim advantage, which helped a lot. Um. Outside of that, you and I were, uh, we've been doing some streams. I've been doing a little bit of Starfield and a little bit of Resident Evil 4 just for funsies before this one. Um, but outside of that, just working on a couple of reviews that I can. House Flipper 2, which has been out on PC for a while. I'm just playing it on PC. I don't have the Xbox version. That hits consoles early April. Um, so I'm working on that. I'm also working on. Erebon Shadow Legacy, which was going to be day one Game Pass, but then they. Something changed with their market, their publishing deal with Raw Fury. So it's no longer day one game pass. It will still be coming to Xbox. They're not 100% sure when, and they haven't said anything about it being on game pass. But so I'm giving that one a look. Um, it's very much a Nick game. It's all about stealth. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So very stealth. Raw Fury as in the arc. Oh, no, that's Raw Thrills. The publisher. Yeah. The publisher. Raw Fury. Raw Thrills. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that Erebon looked good when I saw it in the trailer. Mm-hmm. I thought it looked really good. Yeah, cool. and it's very pretty in its trailers, very uh, colorful. And yeah, so just been mostly working on those and working uh, nonstop on doing news stories. It's, it's so fun. Yeah, well, I feel like we're getting the hang of it. Mm-hmm. We're getting the hang of it. Oh, it Xbox it's not Europe hard. published 120 plus articles this week, which is... Month month okay but still that's yeah, we're not the gamer.net we're not doing that in a week they do that in a day sometimes at like uh some of those puppy mill of uh video game coverage oh, websites no, i'm I not saw kidding one. 150 I a day i saw one today that really like it really made me laugh uh let me find it guess guess the website first of all come on maybe we should use ai to pump out our articles no yeah, it's okay. funny, um, we did get on Microsoft Start, so if you ever see us in the little boxes on Microsoft Edge, we're in those yeah. now, and you do have to declare if you have used any AI generation on your articles. True They're story. Like, you must let us know, so we'll market that for people. And if you don't, um, we'll probably kick you off. Yeah, uh, I saw, I've got to see it today, it was a Starfield article, right? Because obviously the SEO is still great. Mm-hmm. Um and the headline really cracked me up. Uh, here we go. This is guess the website. I'm going to give you the. I'm going to give you the headline. Ten points if you guess the website. You ready? The headline is: <clears throat> There's officially no reason to play Starfield anymore. Name <laughs> name your website. It's so stupid. And a bonus I don't even point. Know. Chat chat can play along. Mm. Name the website. No googling. Mm, and a bonus point. And a bonus point. If you can tell me why there's no reason Starfield's worth playing anymore, GameSpot. No, Fred, not. Is it? It's us? proper. It's not gaming specific. It's proper content mill, though. Hmm. Oh. Proper content mill. So they do do gaming, and they have a they have a sister site, and then they have the the main site. The mm. sister site is the gaming centric one. And I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. Sometimes. Nick will go on a oh, comicbook.com. A, so will you rant? go on a comic? There we go. It's no, Screen like Rant. Game, no, but Game Rant. Oh, Screen Rant. Screen yeah. Rant. Okay. It's, yeah. it's okay. Screen Rant. Yeah. Um, and the reason 
this, this is why I was just like, why is this in my feed? The reason that there's no reason to play Starfield anymore is that now that Starfield's one feature with longevity has also been added to No Man's Sky, there's officially no reason to play the Bethesda ship building? Space RPG. You know, No Man's Sky surpassed Starfield with its orbital update offering a ship fabrication feature. That's it, people. Bethesda. Sorry, guys. Pack it up. Don't do the patches. Ignore the fact that one is an exploration survival game and the other is a full-on RPG and they really aren't the same thing just because they're both set in space and sure. I mean, No Man's Sky is a fantastic game. Yeah. But it isn't a fucking deep RPG. Like, what are they smoking? Anyway, it's, it made me laugh. Easy SEO. Yeah, it's it's gross. Also, I've got it's our gross. I've got our community night nice playing, shamed. and your Windows taskbar was showing most of it. I didn't realize, like just the icons, not the actual taskbar. But you can see all the icons on the taskbar. Ghosting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Sometimes if I if I'm alt tabbing because I was alt tabbing to mm. like get people into the game, mm -hmm. and if you missed it, if you missed it, chat. And hello, everyone. Hit the like button while while I'm saying hello, please. It's lovely to see you all. Um, yesterday, we did our first ever community game night. All three of us, once Nick had woken up, we were all playing Halo Infinite online. You could see Jesse and I's uh, gameplay streams while we were playing. Um, and we had people from the community, from patrons, YouTube members, and just every everyday community folks from our Discord, from our forums, playing games with us. And it was a really good laugh. And I have figured out how to do... Um like up to four video streams all at once i could do that now be interesting it to requires try. the other person to have a half parsec i don't know if that's on mac or not but i can make mm. it work yeah investigate um, and i have to give a big, very big thank you to everyone that came along to, to have fun because you know the lobby filled up genuinely pretty quickly um mm. but a big shout out to vinnie 13 uh mm. for all of his efforts in actually having some game modes for us to play um it made it even more like it almost felt organized it was very fun um and i had a good time and we will be doing them again so yeah despite uh, my constantly unstable latency oh man level. despite your I can't never wait. ending rants because i, I don't wait. like losing i don't like losing uh, no, and no when shit. it's something out of my control i get pissed off like my ping was really bad the entire time like i don't think you quite understand what it is to play a game you're decent at unload like 17 clips into someone who just does not die and then they turn around with a couple of shots and you're like dead i don't yeah, I, I, quite mate, know what that feels like we yeah. do I've we, played we don't know it as bad before. as that but we've had plenty of high ping matches in in the uk three four hundred ping matches before yeah what happens um, I would say I cannot wait to see Creaky Legs, uh, Creaky Legs montage of all of your bitching from the games on Refuge and the Pillar of Autumn Space Battle one because the montage is going to be great. It was just you, like the whole lobby just soured in two games because you were just fucking spitting. I, I can't. I hate it. I hate it so much. It's so annoying. And it's funny uh, that my kill count went up the instant we went into SWAT. The instant we went into SWAT, my kill count went up because that mitigates some of well, the lag. Well, I think it was still the fact like that you set up camp at the back of the map was probably also <laughs> a, a key part of it. Yeah, oh, we, you had a tent, tent a little you stove. Saw. That's just what you saw. I was going out there. Don't worry. Because well, yeah, I, hmm? I died plenty. I died plenty. Anyway, anyway. Uh, it's lovely to be back. It's Saturday night. Um Let's talk about what we've been playing. What have we been playing? Uh, Nick, anything new this week? Uh, am I allowed to say? You can say without yes. saying anything about the game itself. No impressions. You can't say what like... you played at the arcade. I am. Mm -hmm. So I am currently in the middle of reviewing um, TMNT Arcade Wrath of the Mutants. Uh, and if you're wondering, it is the 2017... The Raw Thrills arcade game finally being ported to console seven years later. So I will not give my impressions of the console port, but I guess I could talk about the arcade game that yeah. I've played many, many times at Time Zone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so if you have played the arcade game of TMNT Arcade Wrath of the Mutants, Whatever your thoughts are will apply to, may apply to this 
console port. I didn't mind that arcade game. It was okay. Um, when I played it at the arcade. Shredder's Revenge is arguably probably one of the best Turtles arcade games like out there. But this is still a decent arcade game if you've played it at the arcade. <laughs> um, so I'm currently playing that. Um, and I'm also playing my normal trilogy of Bellatro, Fortnite, and Rocket League. Um, I was playing a bit of Fortnite, as I mentioned last night, as part of an extension of the community game night. And we won our first match, Victory Royale, straight away. Um, Skills. What else? Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, the whole time, ask Corkenstein, the whole time I was playing, I'm like, Halo sucks compared to this. Fortnite's so much better. <laughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? I also managed, uh, Jesse got me Grandia mm-hmm. HD collection. So I'm, I'm going to, I wouldn't mind jumping back into Grandia 2 to see how that's aged. I suspect every time I see that, I call it Grenadia or Grand. Grand, like I just can't say the. I don't know. My brain just glosses over the word. No, it's like grandia. if you look at the word legend for too long, or you've typed it out too often, and then you see it and it just says legend. Like no matter what you do with your Are brain, you sure you're, you're like, not just dyslexic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not dyslexic, bro. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a, there's a condition for when you see a word so often it, it kind of starts to look or sound wrong in your head, and you're like Le- legend, legend, legend. Maybe. Anyway, sorry, um, I, I, I digress. No, that's okay. I haven't played Grandia in 22 years, so my memory of it is a bit... Like, I was actually watching a long play just before, and, like, all of a sudden I remembered the voice, and all of a sudden I remembered the little post-win animations, and, like, things started to come back. But I have a sneaking suspicion it won't have aged the best. Um, What else did I get that I want to try out? I think Jesse got me a code for something else. Get you a light that I want to try out. No, there was another code that you got me, and I wanted to. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, but Grandy is the main one I want to try out. That's it. That's all I've been playing. Nice. nice. John, what have yes, you been playing? Oh, okay. Me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, if you've been paying attention to Xbox Zero dot com, uh, I had been playing. Uh, kind of like the week prior to Monday, uh, South Park. Snow Day, um, the latest in the South Park franchise uh, that isn't a 2D uh, deep RPG. It takes elements of those RPG games, you know, so everyone's kind of still doing Dungeons and Dragons style bits, um, but it turns into uh, 3D Castle Crashers esque brawler um, with some rogue like elements. Um, so you, you're based on runs. Um, decidedly average i'm i'm sorry to say like there's some occasional great uses of the south park ip but after one or two levels you're like okay this is being carried by the ip um there just isn't enough meat on the bone to justify the 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 time sink and the, the 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 biggest kind of crux for me is if your game is designed to be replayed over and over and it is so mind-numbingly monotonous to actually play through that you really don't want to do that once you've mm. finished it. You kind of, you kind of lost the the reason for why these things should be run based in the first place, and that was a big whoops for me. The weirdest Can I ask thing a about question. yeah, go for it. I, I will say I think the game looks stunning. When I watched your video, I was like, it's man, pretty. this is a really good looking game. It's it doesn't um, feel pretty to play though. Like the lighting and stuff is quite unique. I don't know if you've seen the difference between the Switch and the and the Xbox versions as an example. The Switch is incredibly flat. So all of the nice subtlety in the snow and the dirt, it all, it's all just gone. It just looks completely lacking in depth, uh-huh. which is kind of more South Park-y, arguably. But, yes, yes. Um, it's not an ugly game. It just feels, no. it feels very floaty and, and not nice to play, despite the okay frame rate and everything. I had a thought the other day. Is roguelike just the modern day term for having a game over screen and a death? No, state? because because in 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 these kinds of games, and Jesse, keep me honest, because you're more of the expert. But to, to my understanding, in these kinds of games, 
you have certain elements that you will be earning that are unique to the run. So, okay, I've got this power up and this power up and this power up and this power up and it might get me to the end. And if I die, all of those power ups are gone. But I retain the stuff I collected up to that point that I can then spend on permanent upgrades to a different skill tree that makes the chances of me succeeding in the next run better. Does right. that make sense? A rogue game, that... the original rogue, just had per run upgrades and no meta leveling. Rogue likes and rogue light are kind of the same thing where essentially you have your per run things you earn and you have your meta leveling outside of runs like an actual account based leveling so that's what makes it a rogue like and not a rogue because rogue has no meta leveling it was a incredibly old game um think of it as in Bellatro. in Bellatro, you have the deck you build each run with your upgrades and all that stuff each run and then you have your meta leveling which is unlocking more cards and jokers and everything that's your out of run leveling still- that you do it still just ultimately feels like the modern day version of what arcade games were. But arcade games like, didn't have that leveling because obviously they didn't know who you were most of the time. There were a few. Well, that they would didn't have, their have the leveling systems, outside but, your run, yeah. but technically it was a run. You'd put in your money, yeah. you'd play. Whatever Roguelike you got isn't within that just game, you run kept. based. Roguelike is run based with meta leveling, like outside of your run. Because there's always, there's obviously always been things that are run focused and you know, a very short campaign or something like that. The the roguelike genre is when you mix having something that's, you're focusing on a run and then you do extra unlocks for future runs, essentially. I yeah. just, I feel like they just use that term for everything now. I feel like it's used everywhere and it's every, anywhere meaning. and everywhere and it's... It has its, it, it's, it's a very popular game mechanic. Like, you know, it is it's something that that can promote some like re, you know addictive style like i'm going to go back i'm going to do more i'm going to have another go and... but i don't think that's a mechanic i just think that's well okay well in this game you can actually die and have a game over state like you but it's you not a game over state you just failed that days. mission you know you're still you're still earning stuff but it is game over you're starting again mm. it's game over just like in the arcades you'd play you'd collect your stuff and then you die and start all over again but because we're in a modern day now there's some stuff you hold on to so i feel maybe, like it's, maybe it's a an modern evolution of the both but yeah there you go. that's how it feels to me but so i will I say hear it and i'm just like yeah i can see it. in the chat uh it's snow day a, a three out of ten though uh you know uh, reviews is subjective it's not broken in any way shape or form it worked perfectly fine the matchmaking or the or the way of grouping friends together worked perfectly fine the the lobbies were stable we didn't have any lag spikes or anything like that no issues the biggest thing i would say and the reason it got a six out of ten for me but it's a weird thing to say but also i recognize that kids watch south park right even though it's definitely not for kids kids watch it i watched no. it when i was a kid loads of kids watch it but it's definitely inappropriate for children but the depth of the gameplay on offer felt perfectly appropriate for like a 12 year old right and that <laughs> that is kind of weird to me like did they is that was that a design choice i don't know but three out of ten i wouldn't have given in that three out of ten says to me this thing is broken this thing is is is, is you know faulty in some way this thing is completely non-functional or breaks often enough it is a perfectly serviceable for, and it's a budget title this isn't a 70 quid game this is a mm. 30 30 dollar mm-hmm. title right three out of ten says to me that that's broken three out of ten might say to me you're reviewing this not for what it is but for what you wanted it to be maybe but that's just it's an opinion they're all opinion like who gives a crap review scores are stupid um oh my god rogue is like just this i'm watching a video on what rogue is right yeah. now the original rogue it's incredibly old that's rogue mm-hmm. and rogue had no it's just leveling. like a dos it was just a it's a dos prompt thing. game yeah it was like the it's first like a dos prompt game it was the very it was one of the very first you're building up things during a run game and not a campaign focus just get through type of thing what the fuck? deep breath snickets yes yeah, so okay. roguelike they've only been around for like eight years. i know cheese cheese works is in the chat like roguelike is when they're tough roguelite is when they're not essentially the easier ones different genres like 
people I use them interchangeably and just completely forgot. I probably played this as a kid and just totally forgot. I never played the original Rogue. But yeah. Wow. It was a, okay. a different time. It was a, a very different thing. Um, but it, it is essentially, no one calls them rogues because rogue was no meta leveling, run based. I don't know if it was procedural, I forget. But um, yeah, roguelikes are a thing. They are, you level up during the run and you level up outside the run. And it can cover a lot of different genre types. You, It's more a set of mechanics you put into another genre most of the time. Like a Souls-like. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jesse's playing it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I don't want to uh, distract, but there's a lovely little super chat from the name I haven't seen in a little while. Dominic Malta oh, yeah. with a 199 super chat. I've missed you guys. Thank you oh. for all you do. We haven't been oh. anywhere, mate. We've been right here for you, buddy. We've been well, here. You, you have haven't you been? been around. Where have yeah, you where been? Have you been? <laughs> We've been here. Oh, Where careful. He, been? he might have a really sad story or something. Now oh, you're yelling. Yeah, at him like, oh, God, and mind. then we'll feel terrible. <laughs> oh, Thank you man. anyway. Yeah, we appreciate it. Um, I didn't I didn't play Snow Day on Switch. I'm just looking at the chat. I reviewed it on uh, PC because that's the only codes. I didn't get Xbox code yeah, until they gave us Xbox the code. day of launch. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one I was of those like, ones that did not, okay. it didn't pass um, certification like until then, probably. Yeah. That was on PC. Yeah. I played on PC, but with pad. So I was like, I was playing on a console, just a really pretty one. Um, uh, now, on the subject of Super Chats, and I apologize in advance if this causes any uh, upset or, or or sadness or anything Thanks. like that, particularly for, for because I think I saw him in the chat, but I, I wanted to, I, I mentioned this on Headlines, our, sh our news show on Thursday. If you've not been watching for a while, we do a twice weekly news show, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, a really nice player who's done a super chat. Um, so let's just bring it up. He just uh, did one right now. I know. I'll, we'll read it in a sec. Deck from the Crick Resume podcast. You may have seen him on Twitter. Uh, his family and, and particularly his son is going through a real hard time. Um, his mm. little boy, 16 months old, has just been diagnosed with leukemia, which as a father, I don't even want to, mm. I don't even want to imagine. Right. So they are going through hell. Um, He's a good peoples, so there's going to be a GoFundMe link in the chat. If like, and I will say it again, same thing as same thing as we said on uh, on Thursday. If you're going to drop a super chat, don't go donate to this fund me instead. Like we'll we'll live for for a week, okay? Go donate to the fund me instead because every little helps, and it helps them get a better quality of life, better treatment, everything else that they need to get through it. Okay, simple as. So go do that. Links in the chat. Show me how awesome this community can be please and yeah that's it let's read quick resumes uh, yeah. super chat if you uh wouldn't. listening from hospital with the wife and baby asleep bought mario odyssey to keep myself sane we'll let you know if it's a 10 out of 10 or that's not. a Thanks, that's, guys, bait. <laughs> that's bait that's bait <laughs> oh, i mean it's, it's silver lining and all <laughs> mario like, odyssey mario odyssey <laughs> mate Oh man. Too good. Too good. But yes. Um best wishes for the little one. Because that would be Yeah, it's only more thing. Man. Oh no, I I mate, I've I'm not gonna say I've been there, but I had a similar scare with my younger one and man. Yeah, man. That was the worst. Parenthood. It's the absolute worst. It's it's can be really hard. Um, but there you go. But yeah, super, super chats, stick them in the GoFundMe instead. All right. We'll, we'll be okay for a week, hopefully. Um, but love you guys. And yeah, it'd be really awesome to, to see folks donate. So please do, uh, cause it's going to a good mm. place. Anyways. All right. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. <sighs> housekeeping. Hey, <laughs> if you're watching right now and you've never watched this before, please do hit that like and subscribe button. If you're watching all the time because you love us, hit the like button anyway because, you know, the algorithm demands it. It's been fun. With Nick, uh, Nick, I don't think I don't think you were with us, but we were chatting about um, what YouTube's been up to lately, and it looks like uh, they are purging YouTube of any kind of uh, 
bot account or dodgy account or you know if you were foolish enough to perhaps spend money on buying accounts to boost your 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 ranking for some reason like i know there are channels out there that do that um but yeah it's it's weird out there in the youtube land like we're gaining subscribers every video we put out but our subscriber number is just like and i think that's about the same for everyone right jesse going over all our videos the past week we've probably gained like 150 subs but our overall number is down 17. mental isn't it weird just stop doing all those giveaways on Twitter. Just keep it. Kind of we're going to keep it in the Discord and in the and in the Patreon from now on. And in you know, the that's where the real fan in is. In the staff you know? to make to, as a thank you, a bit. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. I would say one the the only other thing that I would like to talk about that you and I were playing is I 100 percent stand by my review of Redfall. We played that a couple times yeah, in the past week. Had a ton of fun. Really want to get back to playing more of it on stream with our fun little setup. Like I have enjoyed the shit out of it and i'm like every time like anyone who gave this a three or four is just a prick um well do you, do you know what it, it's an interesting one yeah because we were just talking about the, th the threes and fours and, and and silly stuff like that for video games which normally you would reserve for for something broken you know like or at least heading that way um now granted you know diving back into red four at the moment it's it's had a few patches right but on pc it was a predominantly better experience on than on console anyway mostly due to the performance side of things but we're playing through co-op and and i'm playing this open world uh what's the what's the best phrase uh immersion sim light i think is yep. a nice way of putting it there are little flavors of that right but the art design is fantastic the combat i'm quite enjoying some of the weapons pack some serious punch it's quite challenging at times mm -hmm. um and we're just playing it and that's, that's one of the biggest changes that's from quite launch. Good fun. I get under at launch the the online thing was broken where quite often vampires just wouldn't actually activate and people wouldn't activate right away. They have fixed that. They fix that pretty quickly. Um, but it can be a hell of a lot harder now. It is worth planning abilities and how you're going in and not just ramboing everything all the time. Um, there's way more vampires too, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I I played the shit out of it at launch i played the shit out of it after launch on stream always having people um getting very mad that i enjoyed the game like i don't know what else i can say other than i think it has an awesome story it looks really good also the 60 fps mode on series x looks fantastic now might be on series s too the the 60 fps mode on series consoles looks great um it's one of the best implementations of fsr like it looks almost native while being mm. a pretty lock 60 um it feels a lot better on controller as well they've gotten the aim acceleration pretty dialed in you can change through through a few things and on pc it always felt incredible because they're great with mouse and keyboard um yeah i i like redfall i wouldn't people are like you're the guy who gave it an 8.5 and i just i nod my head and say yep, yep. Doesn't, proudly wouldn't change for me I, i've got over <laughs> I had a really good time. i got 100 like 115 <laughs> hours in it or something total like yeah I've, I've played a lot of redfall i really like it the end yeah yeah i think it's another example of people uh going in and, and again reviewing the game am i reviewing this as the guy who likes open world looter shooters or am i the guy reviewing this wanting a super deep immersive sim like the other games that arcane have made because if you went in expecting that you're probably not going to be pleased with what you find. Especially um, there's so many that do cover things without seeing all of it. And I get it if you just really hate something. Um, but the second area, the first area in Redfall is good. The second map in Redfall is legitimately great. Um, even at launch, it was way better overall as far as just more dynamic encounters and stuff. And I, I don't know. I, I really like the game. I don't know. It's never changed for me. I, I liked it when it was new. And I like it even more now that they've fixed some stuff up. Good. Yeah, I'm enjoying it too. Long may our gameplay sessions continue until we've completed mm. it because it's good fun. Um, now, one last one I wanted to talk about because it's also kind of got a subject. Uh, we all played Halo Infinite this week, right, as part of the community game. We all night. played Helldivers too. We, we did all play Helldivers too. We can talk about both. Mm. Uh, which one do you want to talk about first? Which game beginning with the letter h would you like to tackle first nick hell divers 
You want to talk about Helldivers? We can talk about it. I went up two right? levels in one game. I've been level one since I got that game, and then I played one proper game and went up two levels. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I pretty much but play had... on Suicide and Helldiver difficulty now only. Why? Um, because that's where you get all the really cool shit. And also, it's it's challenging. But it's awesome. But it's challenging. And then it's frustrating. But it's, then it's great. It's very much a game. <laughs> if you've got a group of people to play with, it's really good. If you don't, it's eh. Yeah. You need a good group to play with. It's actually insane, the difference. It's actually crazy, the difference. Because I've played it both now. I've played it on my own, and I've played it with you guys. And it's night and day. It's like a different game. It is built entirely like for crazy. co-op. It's that is the focus, is co-op. They they uh, they want you to have a good group to go in. The challenge is the game because there's not some big story. There's a meta story like outside of it, especially in social media with all the stuff they do, and it's cool. Um, it's just it's really solid. They really solidly fun. transitioned Helldivers one from that Diablo perspective into a, a competent. Metal Gear Solid Five feeling, third person shooter. Yeah, and so and when I played it on my own, I was just like, this isn't really that good. It's a bit. Yeah, you've got to have a boring, crew. and you've got to have a crew. Absolutely, and I would say that the earlier difficulties, you'll occasionally get moments of panic because you're low low level, so you might not have many cool stratagems got and stuff. Nothing. Mm. Um, like there is no greater feeling than calling in an airstrike or a 500 kilogram bomb and just seeing like the marker of the bomb go down and then like it's just Mm. like yeah it is is so silly I saw someone shared with me there's so many memes and stuff out there but there was like a there was a meme of, of, of a woman talking about how this is why I hate video games. It's just a male power fantasy. And then it cuts to a clip of Helldivers and a guy is standing between two mechs like he's straddling like a player on top of two player mechs. And it's just playing like back in black or something. And he's just like with a flamethrower. I'm just like, yeah, this is Helldivers. It's great. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I'm just at the cusp of level 20. And I have to say, when you get the, the kind of bubble shield... Mm. That's a game changer. That's like when you know you're kind of like at that level because all of the bugs that come up and kind of knock you or cut you and you kind of stumble and it stops your flow, your shield kind of soaks that up so you can be a little bit more like quick responding to it. But then the game just throws like four times as much at you and it is it is just like if you get bogged down or get separated, you are fucked. <laughs> I am really level three. Uh, I'm, I'm level <laughs> 19, I, I am think. Level, I am level so. three. We'll have to get some more sessions in with you, Nick. You know? Yeah. We'll have to get some more games in for laughs. For the lols. Um, oh, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, Halo, though, it had its new network update, and obviously we got to experience that that last night. Now, I know, Nick, mm. you didn't have a great experience because, you know... Australia, Australia! Apparently, it, like, screws <laughs> over Australians even more. Well, yeah, it's, it's going back to the old way of doing Allegedly. things. Like in the Halo... Halo three days, you know, you have to track your shots and, and all of this stuff. Um, I really liked it though. It felt, it Mm -hmm. felt more like Halo to me. The only one that felt broken was the snipe, that sniper one where we're (laughs) popping out of the holes that broke the server real hard. Cause I would shoot like people in the head four times and nothing would happen. But then I die when I went back down in the hole. There is an initial, the, the thing with Diglets, which is the custom game that we were playing. Um, there is a there is a mode within that that um, when you spawn you are invulnerable for like two seconds, so you've got kind of like a white shield before you're. Mm-hmm. So there were many times when you're like popping someone, you're like, "What aren't they doing?" It's because they've just spawned and you you've just. But then them. I would just spawn and immediately get headshot too. So it's like, oh cool, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It feels it feels frustrating to play, uh, but it was still a really good life. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. Um, I like really, the car really one, it. Uh, the sumo one. Have yeah. you never played any of those kind of custom games before? I Man, they were like SWAT. our bread and butter. Like I just play SWAT. Nights. That's all I play in Halo SWAT. Wow. That's it. Yeah, we've got, we've got more like that. So I think I'll, I'll work with uh, the illustrious games master that is Vinny13 and his uh, page upon page of bookmarks. And for the next community night, we'll have a really good, like, solid uh, variety of known and tested working custom game modes for us to all uh, indulge in and be silly with um but yeah it was definitely a lot of fun 
So if you missed out, you, you can know watch which the stream. Sucked? Which one sucked? The Banshee versus Pelican, or whatever it was. <laughs> mm. That was the, the wasps. That was the worst. I made that. That was, it's just that was the wasps the absolute... are too weak. Yeah, yeah, the wasps are weak. Their weapons are worthless, and they have no maneuverability. Well, the only one that's worth the 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 um, missiles are really good, but they're very easy to avoid if your timer's up for your um, dodge roll. Like, if you're a, if you're a wasp in that mode, you have zero chance of winning. Zero. It's impossible. Pretty much. Who would make to... a mode like that? We 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 did. Like, I did, in fact. I made that mode. Too. I know. And I'm like, why would you do that? Why we would you make a mode scripted, where only one team can win? We even scripted uh, the damage of the wasps to be increased by a number of percent to be a one-on-one damage to damage. Make it like 400%. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can tweak that a bit. But, yeah. Oh my God. There I were was times just like where firing I, bullets and bullets I hit into like these banshees. Three rocket volleys and then 10 seconds of shooting and they didn't die. And it was very confusing because other times they did. So, I don't know. But yeah, it was good times. It was good times. Anyway, that's all the chit chat about the video games we've been playing. Uh, did you have any reviews out this week, Jesse, just before we move on? No. Or... Uh, it was the um, one of the few where I didn't. We had only two video reviews, I think, or... A one video review of South Park and then Harold Halibut and that was about it. I don't want to talk about I don't want to talk about the Harold Halibut video. Mm-hmm. It makes me sad. Previews it makes me great. sad. We have more previews I, coming honestly, up, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Can't say anything else, but please watch them. <laughs> They're very important for uh PR companies when it comes to them liking us and giving us more stuff. So previews are always a, a great we thing. We will have we will have, let me tease a little bit more elaborately. We will have two previews early. Actually, no, let me rephrase. We will have five previews technically uh, early this coming week. Um, and you should keep an eye on Xbox Um And another one the following for those. week. And, and one of them, I will say, one of them out of the five really surprised and impressed and i am quite excited for this particular thing and that's it that's all the teasing i'm gonna do we have six previews next month so please watch wow them. but go watch my harold halibut preview you you big you jerks. A bad name what because nobody yet nobody's searching how did they make harold halibut I, I it wasn't named that originally i changed the name to try and up the viewership mm. a little bit it I was just, just named preview Harold mm-hmm. Halibut. Yep. Um, but then I was but like, then you got to put Game uh, Pass. You got to make sure people know in the title that it's Game Pass. Yeah, I don't know. It really, it made me sad. Mm. It even made me more sad that every outlet that covered that preview had all of that access and info, and not a one of them used any of the cool behind the scenes how they actually took a lump of clay and real things and put them into the game no one did it just me you always see the difference between passion and paycheck like what you're in it for obviously that we're not in it for a paycheck that we're not not in it for a paycheck too but there's passion behind it yeah it just grumble anyway um let's talk about the news let's talk about the news before we do that, though, oh, you, know no, how really? I said earlier, <laughs> you know how I said earlier that I was feeling really sore and tired? Well, slowly, yeah. slowly, I've been feeling better. Oh, why is that, bro? Because I've been drinking control. So now I'm feeling much better. So you can even see there that it's almost empty. Look at that. See, you can see it in there. So Very nice. if, if you want to feel better... And John's finally getting some control as well. I know! I, like, I am excited! <laughs> Yeah, Jesse's oh, already hey. got it. Jesse's got like the strawberries and cream that he nearly dropped just there. Um, and he did drop. I knocked it over. Um, I could hear the shake there. <laughs> so go to hey. www.drinkcontrol.com forward slash Xbox Zero and you too can get some control to drop like Jesse just did. No, I dropped. Well, I mean, the I dropped floor. the shaker. New shaker, yep. by the way. I don't know if they, they didn't say anything about not showing oh, yeah. it off, but this is new. Healthier foods. It's, it's really one. nice. Clear plastic, oh, it's got the white black, top. Yeah, yeah, it's got the black cap thing. I like that. Mine's yeah, they, they sent over a bunch of stuff. Like they've got their their cookies and their meal bars. And holy shit, is strawberries and cream delicious. 
Ooh. Well, I just ran out of fruity flakes, and I've got a bag of apple smacks waiting for me, which I've never had before. I've never had apple smacks, so I'm looking forward to trying that one. Um, but yes, so soon we'll be finding out how John feels about it because he's getting some himself. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, cool. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better, Nick. I'm glad the power of control has powered you through to yeah. feeling a little bit more alive. Heal, it's healing properties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does not have uh, healing properties. I am enjoying all the variety <laughs> of names from Harold Halibut to Terry Tuna, Freddie Flatfish, Tommy Trout, Copper Cod. <laughs> it's just the chat being silly. Love you guys. Hit that like button, please, if you would be so kind. Michael Minow, that's a good one. Um, Here is their all right, chocolate let's talk about... chunk cookie. Okay, we're still on control. The tangents oh, wow. are ridiculous. That's today. huge. That's full that is a thick yeah. cookie. It is. That's full I mute myself while yeah. I chew. Okay, you do that. Um, and you can pull up the, the render that we did. Earlier this week, uh, via uh, Xputer, I believe, who had kind of previously said that they've seen it and they know what it is, the digital white xbox series x was shown off um the one that we i leaked first what i don't what when did you do that i august 2023 i don't give a shit nah, i'm I claiming it I, I don't think august don't think 2023 true. rumor mill let me before I'll, the I'll ftc even, document before the ftc oh, leak, Nick, before come on now. Jez, before oh, anyone no come on come on now yeah mate <laughs> no, nah, I'm gonna I'm not budging on this one. No, nah. oh, okay. where is it? I'm gonna find out exactly which episode. Episode wow. 171. Wow, that is a long time. Rumor mill. <laughs> oh, I said Microsoft's looking into a digital Series X. There Shocking. Although Shocking some people news. are saying that those photos are fake. I mean, the jackies on them are really weird. Um, they are. Don't you find that weird that in an age where even potato our, camera like, again yeah like in an age where every camera is like a 4k camera we still get all these videos that look like they were recorded on a nokia 6610 photos <laughs> that look like they were taken <laughs> on a like I, I don't know it's just it's weird it's it's odd that we still see that sort of stuff it's like dude it, your it iphone has a has a good camera just take a photo <laughs> it's fine like you're doing it anyway, so I don't know. It, yeah, I I don't know if it's fake, um, but it it looks real enough to me and to my eyes, right? Um, it we, looks uh, nice in white. A, a colleague of our wonderful art lead, who should always get all of the platitude and gratitude, uh, the wonderful pre drag, a friend of his said oh i've done a 3d render for you guys um so we just tweeted it out and oh man this is a divisive machine i don't think there's a lot of people that are particularly clamoring for one well it's, um, it's all the people who already oh, have one or just hate the company yeah. also we had yes. someone on the forums be like this is a dumb answer to the ps5 pro it's like it's not not an answer it's an answer to, to the, the ps5 pro. slim it's yeah. just a cheaper xbox series x that's digital that's it you already Which have many would argue actually, they should have done from the start instead of the S. S is there for the handheld. Yeah, you could say that the S was all part of maybe a handheld plan, which would be a very smart plan to then execute very soon. Please, Microsoft. Um, yeah, I just... I, I think it looks nice in white. I know that mate, pretty much from day one, my brother wanted a white series x he hmm. like he's very excited about this the old digital thing is whatever you've got the disc option if you want it yeah um i think i uh, there's a part of me that wishes yeah would have been nice if it had been smaller but then at the same time by keeping the same chassis you give more room on the inside for improvements Better and heat i guess dissipation more space for cooling mm. um i don't mind it and if you lay it next to your original, you make black and white like Collingwood. Be a nice look. Like the old magpies, I guess, for you Brits, Newcastle United. For you Brits. It's, it's meant, like, people keep saying, Premier League. who's it for? And it's like, it's for people who haven't bought a console because they want a Series X, but it's too expensive and this one can be cheaper. 
It's meant to be cheaper. That's what the slim PS5 is. It's meant to be yeah, cheaper. Yeah, I'm wondering even what, it's it's gonna, what it's going to retail at, to be honest. Um, 50 quid cheaper than the standard console, maybe? They, they'd want to get that price right, wouldn't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it'd be good to target, you know, maybe that 399 range or even go 349 if you could. That would be, you know, that would sell. I think it would sell at that point. If it's, I think so you can hit three forty nine. The cheapest in the US. they would go all the time is three ninety nine, because then you yeah. can mm. lower it on sale to three forty nine. Yeah, it's like the, I think three ninety nine at cost. least. It's like the one terabyte on Series S was three fifty, but then they lower it all the time. It's like you don't you go a little high so you can lower it to what people might really want to pay. Yeah, you know what I wish they would have done. You know how they've got the back panel on the Series X and it looks super removable, that back panel? I know it's not, but it looks like you can just get your finger in there and pull it out. Yeah. It would have been nice if they had made it so you can just pull that out and then pop your little two terabyte card inside. God, that would have been good. So it wasn't jutting out. Yeah. Or just let me replace the internal one like Sony lets you add inside sony doesn't let you replace the internal yeah they let you add your it's own gonna be internal curious alongside because sony's ssd is soldered to the board you can't re- yeah. you can't like replace and remove it what is the lifespan of the average ps5 before it's a brick essentially we don't know yeah we don't know we won't know for a few more years i'd say you can change the one inside the xbox but you don't have the right they would have to let people start cloning the actual boot drive um and they're loath to do that for security purposes i get it but that would be a way to give it a longer lifespan over time if they could figure it out or if they just sold Mm -hmm. a replacement internal drive because they do the console refurbished ones now um where it's not soldered to the board so it's way easier to just fix it if that drive dies and resell it they're actually reselling those for like 290 on woot and they sold out real quick Woot. um they were console factory (laughs) refurbished ones too but we'd have two super chats if we want to get to them. Uh, we've got super chats and a membership mem- note uh, on this topic. Assassin, Assassin Entertainment, executive not producer. Forward, yes, not looking forward to all digital, especially after the recent stories of Sony, Crunchyroll, etc. We really should talk more about games, not hardware. Yeah, I, like I wish, hardware, I wish, though. I wish we did. We, I wish, you know, but like, I like hardware. I like more talking about actual games than half of the industry stuff. But I yeah. like hardware, though. I know, hardware is fun. Hardware is more interesting because you play games on it. The thing I hate is the business and marketing shit. I can talk hardware to then talk about games. It's just mm. the, the focus on marketing and the business side want, that kills and me. And how much is I want sold. The future. And... I want the future to be all hybrids. Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. Hybrids are the future. Hybrids are the best. And like your ideal scenario, even though I know it's unlikely to happen, this is just my pie in the sky dream scenario, would be whether it's Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, all of them, they've got their hybrid console, and then the dock has like an eGPU thing that like gives it a boost or whatever, and you just dock it in, and ah, that'd be so good. That's the dream for me. One day. One day in the future, I want to go play Bellatro on the go with my Series X level handheld by Bellatro. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Uh, okay. Mohamed Sherez, who's been giving us Super Chats post-show again lately. Uh, hi, Jesse, John, and the dashing Nick. Have a good show. Nick Baker of Xbox Zero claims the miracle of baby Jesus. Resetera and shambles, IGN. <laughs> it's like Resetera and IGN in the one thing. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, uh, that's good. Uh, BT Maverick 707. Finally, get to catch you guys live and wanted to shout out my favorite two Australians. Ooh, why are you Australian? <laughs> did you not, you, you, did you you not know it? about this? Yeah. No. Oh, I'll explain. So, a, uh, a forum troll, like. Yeah. Said, said something and I was like said something unpleasant about us as a site and I'm like you're on our forum dude like get the, mm. like I like just put something jokey like hey if you don't want to be here I can happily oblige you know just something jokey that you would do on a forum post right I didn't discipline there was mm-hmm. no ban and he reported my post so 
saying this is rude and then he quoted me and was like this is unprofessional me, 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 me. and i was like okay, so where's the australian part and then and then fast forward a little bit uh i replied back to him and said you don't get to do this and he said oh, where's this got to be a screenshot of it up somewhere didn't i share it in the chat you shared it in that thread in the what in the moderation thread? No, you shared it in the the god awful dog shit um, third party. Thread. Oh, I shared it on the thread. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I can't even remember what thread it was. Xbox hey, hey. third party. Basically, no. he was like something like, uh, "You're an Australian c word." Yada yada yada. I was like, "I'm not Australian," so that's why that's the in joke now for people that have been paying attention to the forum. I got the, the opposite to that. Back in, back in the Halo 2 and Halo 3 lobby days, I used to get called a British piece of shit. <laughs> Go figure. Americans would just hear my accent and be like, you're a British piece of shit. Wow. I was like, stop me. British. That's I'm not British. British. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, thank you guys for the great coverage and entertainment. And by the way... By the way, by the way... Nick really is a tier one insider. He is on fire. Why? What happened now? Did something happen more recently? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I, I, I saw in the chat earlier that apparently I got mentioned on Xbox 2 again. Oh. What were Rand and Jez saying about me? Giz? Couldn't have been anything nice. Yeah. I doubt it was anything nice. Probably having a dig again. No doubt. Stab, stab, stab. Yeah. Never mind. Never Stabity, mind. stab, stab. Um, but yeah, there you go. An all white digital series X might be arriving at some point in the near future. I cool. get it. I would get it, but I actually need the disc drive, strangely enough for backwards compatibility. Hmm. Fair enough. Yep. Uh, next up on the news docket is, uh, Phil Spencer has been doing the old interview interview rounds, uh, with Polygon. Uh... Um, bunch of different things you know he he wants a handheld he likes uh, according to the article likes the idea of other storefronts on consoles um, i feel like that got blown out of proportion and not taken out of context but like i was wondering why i was seeing twitter talking about the next xbox having steam and epic on it i'm like i don't think that's going to happen and then i read the actual interview and i'm like no how are you gleaning from that interview that the next xbox is going to have steam and epic that's not i don't think that's going to happen at all mm. like phil was more hey wouldn't this be cool kind of thing like i don't, I don't think he it's, was it's the points he's the made in the past that... before where it's like how nice would it be for xbox to be more like pc in the sense that, yeah, yeah, because he always talks about how it, PC it, has forever backwards compatibility and yeah, all these other things. Yeah, it would things. be, it would be awesome. It would be awesome. In fact, like before the Series X launched, we had said on this podcast, so that's now three over three years ago, we were like, how cool would it be if the Series X had like Windows 11 or a Windows 11 mode? That would be awesome if it had that. But mm. it's not something you'd expect, like. How would they do it? Some kind of virtualization, some kind of virtual machine type thing. To, like, cause how would it work? Like, I feel like it's the other way around. I feel like because licensing and the type of device that is being used to play the games is an issue. You know, if 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 an, an Xbox gets released that has Windows on it and is an Xbox console. Like, I, I don't know how pleased game developers are going to be to offer everything in both a first-party console store, but then also allow access to what is arguably cheaper PC store. I don't know. Like, and also, is that going to be a problem? If Windows is on a device, that opens up hacking way more. It's just Security, inevitable. Yep. Um, they have a specific license for a specific hardware. So if they're going to put out an Xbox handheld, if they're going to do future things with other, it has to just be an Xbox first and then figure out a way to make other things work through, you know, engineering magic and translation layers that they have and all that type of stuff. It wouldn't just be I, I, dual boot, essentially. Yeah. What okay, if it's, so, if it's yeah. a different way around and it's actually 
Steam and and um, Epic, Epic and Itch making console stores that are part of their ecosystem, but they are loadable on consoles. What if it's that? But again, how is it running? Like, so I. It's again, not running. I, I no... It's not running PC versions of the game. They are console stores selling the same games that can sell in in Microsoft's first party store, but they might sell Steam. The Steam console store might sell this game ten dollars cheaper, and then you get competitive natures in stores. No, I don't know. My, my, and again, this no? is with me not no. knowing this stuff and no technical know how whatsoever. <laughs> but I think of something like Parallels on Mac, and it just runs Windows Eleven. Yeah, it's. Straight on your Mac. I mean, with what Proton even is within a window. with Valve and, and all that and trying to get PC ver- x86 versions of games running in their version of Linux. Like, it has to be so the store. So wouldn't it just be that then? It has to be the same store. It can't be a new store that sells new stuff because people want this stuff they've already bought on that store. There's no, I've got all my games on Steam. I'm not going to rebuy them on Steam for console. Like, what's the point in that? I want to buy it on Steam and I can get it on my Steam Deck and my PC and my Xbox in some way and like, that's the system that makes sense but the work then becomes how do you make these pc x86 ver- variants run which is entirely on and how does the licensing work what's the cuts that's all the really hard stuff i also he never mentioned steam i think he did that on purpose because epic and gog are way more open and itch than steam is steam is dominant and almost mm. monopolistic i don't think they'd have any incentive yeah. they have their own steam deck they want to push more than anything. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I don't, hmm. I don't know. I just, I found that odd the way all the stories that came out of this was, well, the next Xbox has Steam and Epic on it. That's like, it's a lot of websites that want Xbox to die, essentially. They don't want to have to worry about it. Uh, this, this links into lots and lots Gary of Barwick. things. Gary Barwick. He's in chat. <gasps> hey, Gary. Gary Barwick's oh, Gary. back. Gary, we've missed Long you. Long time no see. I noticed him immediately. Oh, we... Wow. Long time no see. Good to see you back, Gary. Good to see you back, mate. Um, they would not be. But able to yeah, buy you've Steam got one. you've got a million different things in these interviews. So you've got the whole opening up the console marketplace to allow other providers on their other stores. You've got uh, the handheld conversation. I mean, this has been talked about to death. I don't think we can add anything. There's so much smoke that made. everyone's just choking to death on it. From yeah, we just like yeah. like I, I guess the big question for me: Are we going to see? It, you know, and I, I don't think the handheld is coming out this year, right? I think no, I'm, no, right, no I way. Have thought so, but, I wouldn't have thought so. But Project Scorpio, as an example, was announced yeah. eighteen months mm-hmm. before Xbox that. One X came out in stores. Are we going to see them talk about the vision in a kind of like a June showcase type video? I ahead of time. I, I feel, I feel like at this point. Just save the handheld for next gen. I, I feel it's too late now to release the series. The ne- it's not going to be a new it's gen. Though, to be able gen. To, it's not going to be a new gen to run a handheld like that, though. You're not going to get better than the current handhelds can't do what a Series S does. The next gen is getting a Series S into a handheld. Like that is that is the power envelope you can get on a battery. You can't go more than if you plug it into a wall, you can walk around with a Series S, sure, but it has to work in a handheld for more than 15 minutes. And that's not even possible right now with a Series S. You need like a very fine, refined process on your system on a chip to lower that. What? Because like you can go up to like 45 on a claw, and claw still runs like shit. You can go up to 30 watts or so, 35 watts on the Legion Go. But when you're pulling like 100 out of the wall with a Series S, you've got to be able to get that to maybe 50 or something. And then, and then you're still pushing it and you got to have a big old battery in there. Like the actual I will say, physics, very restrictive. Like Scott's saying in the chat, if that was a Keeley announcement, it's like, <laughs> hey, it's coming. And it's a just a project name for now. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'd get so excited. That Series X is getting sold. <laughs> and the and, um, and then Keeley's reaction would be like, well, oh, sometimes wow. these things leak, but hey, this <laughs> one didn't. We can't be oh, mad at hey, Keeley. Everyone, we got invited. <laughs> to I'm not mad at Keeley. I'm not mad we, at Keeley. We can't Keeley's. make too much fun oh, of him. Wow. We smile more. We got invited. <laughs> Here's Project P, the Series S portable. Oh, well. All and right. now here's Stella Blade. Yeah. 
Stella Blade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, the they, series is they horrible. Have a lot of games coming uh, out. So I do think it's okay to announce hardware way ahead of time because they have so many games coming. You if know they it's didn't, true. then yeah. You know it's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I agree, Jesse. I think I think the, the idea of people saying wait till next gen, like like you just said, Nick, is people need to put gens out of their mind. There are no gens anymore. It's I believe just, in gens. It's just a better iteration right. of what you have, right? Mm -hmm. It's just it's just building on what exists now because it is just PC parts that are somewhat customized, but that's what it is. The it's customization all is based. just keeping them cheap. Like that's the main thing. Like yeah, the, and that's the one thing I think they will have a hard time with if they do a little handheld. It can't do Windows because their OEM partners would get furious because they can't match what Microsoft would do. It could potentially be monopolistic in the sense that it is they own windows if they start making by far the cheapest best windows hardware because surface is not cheap so surface is never no. in that surface costs more than it should sometimes based on the specs inside of it yes. a lot better lately they finally started doing actual current specs but like the the handhelds that are out now are all windows and you've got to be used to windows outside of the steam deck and then you've got to be okay with being only on steam and not having game pass the differentiator that people keep asking is it's Man. it's a native xbox everything you have on xbox just works there you get the full fat yep. game pass like if it's just been talking an about xbox in your hand, if it's essentially a series s with a screen on it and a couple of controllers bolted yep. to it like that's incredible yep. everyone kept telling me it's not possible i'm like that's what they're gonna do I would love that, All right? But we just need to clear this up. Like I can see a bit of iteration of what you have is a generation, John. It is now, right? That's, that's you know, the Xbox One to this, it was a generation. I've had 2022 to 2023 as a generation, but not the way we right? think of video games, yeah. Yeah, like traditionally back in the day, you went from, what was it, 32-bit to 64-bit or 8-bit to 16-bit, all of no. this stuff, right? You had from PowerPC to AMD or from NVIDIA to AMD, you had these... You know, the PS3 was this really unique, the cell. These were generational decisions that were made and planned, and those machines were capable for this period of time. But since the PS4 and Xbox One generation, these are PC parts, mm -hmm. pretty much, right? And then building off of that, all of these games will run. This is why back compat is now easy to, to pursue with and why Phil is often quoted as saying it's the worst generation to have lost because people that all bought PlayStation... They've built that digital library now. And that digital mm. library, there is zero reason because the design process for the next generation isn't going to change. It's going to stay on the same X, x86 hardware and it can just follow through. Um, so, yeah, generations, as as they were traditionally thought of in console gaming, in my opinion, are dead. Yeah, they they'll be done. phone, tablet generations more than yeah. anything. Yeah. And you think about that, like even even with phones now, there was a time maybe three or four years ago where people would upgrade every year. And then it was like, do I need to? Because the iterations are so small. Like the difference the difference with game consoles is, is the R&D to develop them and shove all of that very compact technology into a tiny under the TV box is, is difficult, right? So they have a certain shelf life so that everyone can target them for eight years as an example but then we're getting to a world now where games take five six eight years to build so something's got to change and i think that's why you're seeing so much turbulence in the industry which is another thing uh phil spencer spoke about but before we do that we've got some super chats i think including from <gasps> gary barwick mm. uh mohammed sherez with another one i, I love steve Shires. But is oh, anyone yes. afraid if Steam dominates the Xbox market too? Steam has been good for a long time, but how much longer? Steam I sucks. Steam. Yeah. Every time I uh, use it, I hate it. But people Steam, are used to it. Steam. I don't hate it. Steam just works. It doesn't, it, there's no fluff. It me. just downloads stuff really quickly. It works. I great. hate it. And that, hate that's. Steam. Key. I am and mostly. You can refund and you can I'm gift. I'm mostly and working everything. with beta builds on reviews, and it drives me insane the shit they will let on there. <laughs> fair fair uh gary barwick which should i buy rog ally steam deck msi claw no, no, lenovo go or wait and see if xbox handheld comes this year i'd wait and see if the xbox handheld gets announced this yeah. year 
I don't think it's going to come this year. It gets announced. I've never used an um, ally. I have used a Steam Deck and I have used a Go. And everyone says the the claw kind of sucks because it's Intel and Intel's drivers are behind a lot. Mm. Um, the Go is an... They, I don't think they're making a lot of money off of it because the specs on it are so freaking good and it's very close in price to the other ones. Um, this is essentially like a little laptop replacement. It's so goddamn good and the ports on it are so good. Uh, if you are okay with Windows gaming, the Go is incredible. If you want the console experience, it would be a Steam Deck until a native handheld Xbox was a thing. Yeah. All right. All right. Executive producer Top said in the chat, um, where is it? Sorry to mention it. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, my God. It's so annoying now that is I it, can't find it. Is it the wind? He said something OS? about needing a, a, a special uh, a special OS or... There it is. Yeah. You want a targeted OS for handhelds anyway. No, it would just be an Xbox. It would be the Xbox OS on this handheld. This would be a portable Series S. I've been saying it for like three years. It would just be a portable Series S. Mm -hmm. That's it. You take your two terabyte card out of your Series X, go boop into the bottom of this thing. Your games are just there. It is a Series S. It is not a Windows 11 handheld. I don't think. I think it will be a Series S. Yeah, I think it will be a native Xbox. I don't think it will be a Windows machine. But what do I know? Nothing. Um, Okay. Okay. Uh, the third part of, of Phil's conversation was just generally about everything horrible that's happening in the industry. Um, this is where we get mad at the... him for blaming capitalism. Yeah, the math of, of making a game has changed. You know, as I was just saying, you know, it takes five, six years. It can cost three hundred million to build one. You know, this is why they're experimenting with releasing in more places. Um, the only thing that really struck me about this particular one was was just the general feel of of feeling feeling prepped if you're an xbox fan and you're feeling like you're being prepped to expect more uh of microsoft's first party games going elsewhere uh i feel like that is that is partly what this interview is kind of doing uh, i don't know if anyone else it, disagrees no but... the, his entire time at jdc felt like him prepping people because everybody like uh, um ains over uh, at season gaming put out a really good article um and part of it was if you don't think these conversations are also happening especially at playstation and nintendo you're crazy and then matt piscatella was retweeting it and like yes this is happening everywhere like the math on how to make number go up because numbers stay steady isn't what they want it's like yes they're making more money than god they'd be fine if things never even changed they are making lots of money but they want to make more and the only way to make more in a stagnant growth market that is overall number of consoles users is finding more users. In the short term, you fire people. In the long term, where can we find more users? And you can only yeah. find so much in... In the pie that yeah. is the console marketplace. Yeah, you need to hit everyone. You need to hit mobile. You need to hit the PC. But mobile uses different games. In a different setup, so it's it's a it's its own thing. That's why they bought King. The main reason they bought Activision Blizzard was to get a foothold in mobile between King and now Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. And yeah, it's it's very the the industry is very different than seemingly almost all of the people who cover it think it is. They're they're a yeah. little behind. Yeah, there, there's so much old school thinking out there, and that's a nice segue. I think to an interesting piece that was put out from our good friends at Video Games Chronicle. Um, it was not written um, by, I think, a general staffer of VGC. It was an opinion piece from uh, Nathan Brown um, that talks about Phil Spencer, who's been 10 years behind the wheel of Xbox this year, this week, I think. Um, and this is the headline, Phil Spencer, long cast as Xbox's saviour, may be remembered as the man who killed it. Um, hit points, now that all his big bets have failed, Spencer is turning to corrective measures. Now, this is labelled as an opinion piece, um, but it's, it's a weird one to me um, for many, many reasons. Um, I mean, there's so much to 
to pull out of this. Like, I don't even know where to begin. There's so much that I feel is completely not understanding the console industry at all. I would just wonder, like, how how has every bet failed when they've essentially doubled the amount of money they make every year? Like, I know the the classic way we always look at it, and it still is a thing for Nintendo, even though you have to ignore context with Nintendo, is unit sales. Because he brings up at one point, um, even if Sea of Thieves sold 5 million copies and they made 200 million bucks off of that, that's only 0.3% of the annual gross for Microsoft. That's a drop in the bucket. And it's like, it's not... It's not how any of this works. They're not <laughs> expecting to make two hundred million off of Sea of Thieves on PlayStation Five. It's how much does this port cost versus how much is this port going to make? Also, not just unit sales, but it has microtransactions, so it's a live service game, and you don't expect one thing to carry you. And you're three trillion dollar company almost. Like you expect a ton of little things to add up to your big things, and you're just making money nonstop. And it's it's an old school thought process on, well, PlayStation sold a lot more and Nintendo sold the most they've ever done, essentially. And it does ignore the fact that PlayStation's making, barely keeping any of their money. Their margins are really bad. And yep. Nintendo makes far less money than the other two, but apparently seem to keep more of it. But compared to two generations ago, where they had the Wii and they had the DS, each selling. Two different markets. Yeah, mobile and con and handheld both selling almost equal to what the Switch has done, and you. But they had. But then the next gen, 3DS did pretty darn good, and the Wii U was a massive disaster. So they had to mac. They had to mash. Yeah, yeah. Their two disparate uh, markets together to make one Uber market, which is still way behind the numbers of the old one, but it's doing great because of software sales. Like it's always there's, there's context always yeah, missing the, in all this stuff. There's one big section from this that like really just says so much to me um, about the way, and it, it, I think as much as as you know, you might disagree with the types of games that perhaps Microsoft make. Um, it's this paragraph, right? I'm going to read it out because you know why not. If there's one lesson we can take from the Spencer era, it's that you can enact all the disruptive change you like, but you cannot disprove this industry's oldest truth. Great games sell consoles. A hundred billion dollars later, Xbox still doesn't have them. I still don't. If, I still don't. I still if, to wait, this wait, day don't better. agree with that. If anything, I would agree its first-party output has got worse since the shopping spree began, and its struggles are, as such, no surprise at all. I'm sorry. Like all worse this says in to terms me of what though. Well, this is this is the thing, Nick. All this says to me is that the the industry, the the gaming pundits, the eighty percent of third party games are always picked on PlayStation because that's all of your preferred place to play industry. Not like this. We don't want these games. We want games like Sony makes. And until you make those games, your games are bad. And that is just wrong because it's not true. Didn't Microsoft win Publisher of the Year in twenty twenty one? I think, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I'd argue that, that that's so signs of massive improvement. Never has a first-party publisher won that until that point. It's, it's just, just saying. Hmm. It's, I've, I've always disagreed with the exclusive yeah. things. When, it comes, when, when it's between Sony and Microsoft, I've always disagreed with the exclusive things. Always yeah. have. I've, I've been consistent on that for years. Like, they're not buying PlayStations because of those games. They're buying PlayStations because that's the mainstream console of choice. Exactly. That's it. And the industry keeps pushing that narrative. Look at the way that, like, people, oh, the Xbox tech doesn't exist. You have Microsoft and the Xbox As a division bit. that is the most open, the most communicative, to their detriment often because they, they, they make molehills and mountains for themselves regularly. But uh, it, it gets so much more scrutiny, you know, than any of the other manufacturers or platforms. Um, because they're always doing something. They're always trying something different. And I appreciate mm. that as a consumer, like the value that I've got. But no, 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 that hasn't got God of War or The Last of Us, so it's no good games. Like, the, really, no games is still the argument in 2024? Are you fucking kidding me? The only reality is there's too many games for anyone to keep up with, and casuals don't give a shit who publishes them. They don't look at who's the publisher before worrying no. about where a game is. They wonder... 
who's playing or are my friends playing it if it's multiplayer where are they playing it and how much does it cost that the, the publisher doesn't matter like it, it never it never has and because all the big shit is third party and tends to be everywhere except for you know a few times or it makes sense to be one particular place because they gave you a bunch of money the only platform where exclusives truly push everything is nintendo they are the yeah. one but then everyone also treats playstation the same when it's not they have yeah. some big first party games but they are the casual everyone buys this for fifa mainstream Duty, console Fortnite. yeah like that is their audience that pushes things and they have so nintendo is apple they are expensive they treat their customers like shit and their customers spend a lot of money and Sony is... And they make premium software. Yeah, and Sony is more like App Google, where they feel premium, but their actual customer base is kind of is a lot worse at spending money. And then Microsoft is Google Apple, where they don't have the premium <laughs> feel, but their audience is really good about spending money. So it's like... It's Microsoft's just, BlackBerry. Mm. <laughs> Blackberry are dead. Mate, Bla <laughs> hey, Blackberry customers were high spend users, mate. Yeah. I know. I used to work in phone sales. The Blackbe Blackberry customers were all like execs and shit. So there wasn't many customers, but mate, they were the big wig execs that spent a lot of money. <laughs> I'm telling you now, there's a lot of similarities. The Xbox customers are high spend, they always have been. And, but they do have a ton of them. Like the actual monthly active user numbers for Xbox games across everything, because they're they're focusing everywhere, is just it's astronomical. Like if they January added in, this year was the biggest year in terms of playtime, biggest month in terms of playtime in Xbox history. Just console, not even counting PC just or mobile or yep. or other consoles. Like just that, their own console had its biggest playtime yeah. month ever, and yet people are trying to say it's dead. I agree with you, Jason. As a matter of fact, Jason, they've already done that numerous times over the years. Jason Max in the chat's like, PS5 would outsell Xbox even with no games for two years. Yep. Yep. 100% yep. true. People Sony just, could oh, not I'll release. Just play FIFA. Sony, Sony could not release a game for five years and still outsell them. Yep. Because it's just the mainstream console of choice that everyone goes to buy to play COD on and Fortnite on and all that sort of... I don't know. It's, it's almost people are bagging Sony for not releasing any games. That's like, I'd argue that's financially smart because their games don't make a ton of money anyway because of how much they bloody cost to develop and their console's still selling anyway. And they've, they've done Why a bunch... bother continuing to pump these games out? They actually have shifted to doing more smaller publishing deals, which just Good. makes sense. You, it's not a money hat. You're paying Good. for the game to exist and it fills up gaps in your service like they might not be enormous but you're also not footing the entire bill for everything because it's a publishing deal it's not a we own this company and have to pay for them to exist for seven years while they're not making much money because that's always the that's always the the business look at it is you're you're been making this game for four years your old game barely sells anymore so we're just paying you money and you're not bringing any money in live service live service live service so that's why yeah. you end up seeing fire, fire, fire. And then you're like, oh, shit, we don't have anyone really left to make good games for us. What's going on? It's like, well, you just fired everyone. Surely, surely Sony will acquire Arrowhead by year's end. Hmm. Surely they will. Die. They have to. That's the only studio that's made a hugely successful games as a service game for them. Yeah, they've nailed it. They've nailed it. It's really good fun. Absolutely nailed it. Like, they, they literally made an Xbox game in terms of that multiplayer shooter aspect, which is what Sony's wanted since forever. Yeah. It's, and they've um, got it now in Helldivers. I don't know, man. Like, there is, I'd love to sit down, like, I'd love, like, no PR and just have a really candid conversation with Microsoft execs and be like, does it piss you off the way the rest of the industry talks about you all the time? Completely unwarranted. Does it really piss you off and have them be like, oh my God, yeah, <laughs> you know, like cathartic, well, we saw just having a good email. old bitching session. We be saw the, bad the, guys. the email where Phil was like, and you know, the fanboys at GameSpot, GameSpot. about their reviews is like, it's, it's impossible to not have a, a bias on what you are into. Like it shouldn't be corporations, but there's going to be game types and genres and things like 
you could see yep, it with I have them. Um, the guy Jonathan Dornbush worked at IGN, did the Last of Us Two review, and it's like he was just he loved everything Naughty Dog did. And now he works there, like that type of thing. It's just it's gonna happen. It's do you trust that the person was giving you as as much objective fact in looking at it as a as a product instead of as their love when you're looking at a review. Um, if you that's don't, why Microsoft's you know, even Phil said it. That's why they've realized that good games won't do anything. Not People for, keep not trying to convince themselves. People keep trying to convince themselves that if Microsoft keeps making good games, they'll turn it around. No, they won't. The industry no, won't let them at this because point. Because then we're going to have a situation like we have with all the Halos. The last three Halos have been mid to high 80s on Metacritic, but that sucks for them and for Halo. But when it's Spider-Man, when it's Horizon Zero Dawn, when it's Ghost of Tsushima, when it's... Man, those mid to low to high 80s, bangers. Yeah. Bangers. Well, and it's but also when like... When it's Gears, when it's Halo... What do people think sucks. is good is critically acclaimed. And what is actually good is what makes the most money. So it's like they, they know putting out critically acclaimed Sony-style games doesn't matter because that's not actually going to grow their business that much. Like the thing that will grow it is getting things that people want to play and pay money on consistently. That's why they got Call of Duty, and that's why they got Diablo and World of Warcraft, and it's 10-plus million subscribers paying 15 bucks every month, and the friggin' the money from King rolling in nonstop. Like, that's the main driver of the industry. It's not, I, I hope, I, I love single-player games, and I think that I hope they last forever and support your single-player. It's like, the best-selling single-player games still just make jack shit compared to the best money-making free-to-play games. It's just, it's just the math. They're not over time. They're just going to stop. Like Baldur's Gate three has already dropped, and it had half a year of incredible sales and playtime, but it's dropped because it's a single-player game, and they don't. Once they have mod support on PC. It'll probably go back up exactly like all the Bethesda games do. We see it every time with Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout 3, Fallout 4. All of them release super loved, hated after a month, loved after a year once there's a bunch of mod support. Like it's every time. I just yeah. I just check now because I wanted to be sure I wasn't imagining things. Halo Infinite's Metacritic is 87. Spider-Man's Metacritic is 87. Now, one game is viewed as a massive failure and a shitbox Charlie game. And then Spider-Man is viewed as one of the greatest, oh my well, God, dude, to be fair, the oh, Xbox The Xbox score for Starfield is pumped up by a lot of Xbox branded sites, mm. giving it nines and tens, um, as reported saying, by like, Jason like, Trier. So... If that's not, how is that not the perfect encapsulation of what the Xbox tax is explained as or viewed as? Like Halo Infinite, if you ask any major outlet, they'll still talk about Halo Infinite in a derogatory way and talk about what a failure of a game it was and how it was no good. But it's Metacritic is sitting at the exact same as Spider-Man, which is talked about in like, oh my God, Spider-Man. It's like... And it doesn't, oh God, it doesn't matter that Elder Scrolls like, Online I mean, is actually an enormous moneymaker. Like just, it's a massive game or... Fallout 76 completely turned around or Sea of Thieves, a massive turnaround from launch that's been constant moneymaker. Like they've got the thing that Sony was constantly chasing, but it was ignored because it doesn't count because they bought two of them. They, they, I mean, they've got a bunch of other ones. They've built Minecraft up to be the biggest game ever, but Minecraft doesn't count because it doesn't feel like Xbox. Um, it, it's, it's always moving goalposts, especially like Forza Horizon 5 and it's, going on 40 million player count doesn't count because it's a racing game flight sim doesn't count because it's a flying game who cares if they both make a bunch of money with microtransactions and both in the 90s on metacritic yeah it, it's like there's always matter, a reason there's always a reason it doesn't count. matter as much because it's not the old metric we're used to and it's not the the new approach sony started taking in like what 2013 with the, or even earlier with uncharted 2 like the big third person action game with expensive looks is the main thing you have to have and if you don't have that it doesn't matter if you're successful in other ways this is what we focus on for our platform holders and so they just will always willfully choose to ignore the things that the actual companies care about which is what are we spending what are we making and what what would what, what we keep every quarter that's what they care about yeah 
just looking, uh, we've got some super chats. We'll get to them in a sec. Um, for the 2024, uh, Microsoft ranked number 15 uh, for Game Publisher of the Year um, from Metacritic <clears throat> with an average meta score of 78.4, releasing seven products, 71% good, 0% bad. Uh, great games, none, apparently. They don't think it's going to be over 90. is its own thing. They don't count the Thursday. It's important to make that. Best 2023 game uh, for these for these scorings was Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition on Xbox Series X. Um, Sony ranked uh, 13, so just two above Microsoft, releasing 10 products, 70% good, 0% bad. Great games, one. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2, PS5, 90. Let's see, moment. Arthur won in the chats just proving my point. When I talked about Spider-Man and Halo Infinite both being 87, Arthur One's like different games. So, what's your point? And then he's like, oh, but Halo isn't what it used to be. So again, mate, you're proving my point. The goalpost shift as a way to explain a way that Halo actually, in fact, does suck. Even though it's got a really good Metacritic score. Just because it's not above 90, it doesn't mean it sucks, mate. That's not how the real world works. It's how the console fanboy world works. But it's not how the real world works. And 87 is a good score, as proved by Spider-Man being viewed as a good game. Ghost of Tsushima being an 83, but viewed as a great game. Death Stranding. Like, you can't... You can't just... It's uh. it's all very silly. And, you know, frankly, at this point, you know, it just feels like... It feels like talking about console wars without getting into console wars. It... it I think that this industry, as well as the games industry itself, in terms of the making of games and the math and all of that that Phil Spencer is talking about, and the rest of the industry laying people off. I mean, this week we've seen uh, Sega fire some more people, Nintendo fired some people. Relic, um, re yeah, Relic went independent. All of this stuff, right? But as well as that conundrum of the games industry doing this because games are expensive to make. The, the industry that covers games really needs to have a fucking good look at itself and and realize that predominantly it's just doing a disservice, especially for companies that fuel the us versus them bullshit just to get more money from their clicks and, and SEO rankings. I and am stuff curious, like that. though. I am, I am genuinely curious because, as we know, the industry itself is inherently negative as a, mm. as a default position. Humans by nature are generally quite negative. If Xbox were to go away, where would their hate fueled rage bait come from? But that's the funny thing. They, like, they, they hate love Microsoft. PlayStation too much. They love PlayStation too much. So they and they love they Nintendo too not, much. They're not going to turn there. Turning on Nintendo is pointless because they're too powerful. Tim so Sweeney and where Epic. would where would that <laughs> hatred go? But they're not in the console business. I know. So where does their hate go? Nowhere. I'm, I'm, just, I'm genuinely curious. They don't have much to talk about. In a hypothetical world where Xbox goes away, where does their hate go? I'm genuinely The curious. main truth about console coverage is that Xbox fuels ma the majority Everything. of it. Everything. Like yep. most of the console talk is generally about Xbox. Just mm. again... Reminder, it's why Xbox here exists. Because we were sitting there as gamers, as people like you watching, that just love video games, and we're like, why is everything so fucking brutal out there? Why can't I get mm. a good conversation going about this platform when every outlet is like, <laughs> Xbox. Bleh. Well, okay, we exist now. Yeah, that's why we're here. To actually provide you some some good conversation around the topic, so you know, hey, if you really like what we do, head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. Got three more super chats. Uh, a few super chats. <laughs> yeah, let's dive in. Mohammed Sharez, Nick, you said it best. Xbox games get reviewed. Mm -hmm. That's right. They Accurate. do get reviewed as they Properly should. Reviewed. Xbox games get reviewed as they should, and they're not just glorified ads. They sometimes like, also get review bombed. Yes, unnecessarily. Yes. Redfall is but not a three out of ten. Fifty-seven. They're, they're not, but but that's a good thing though. Xbox games getting reviewed properly is a good thing. That's mm -hmm. what you should be expecting out of your, your reviews. You shouldn't be expecting glorified ads that tell you how to feel. That's because that's what the rest are. They're they're glorified ads. That's what they are. 
Um, and that's why I don't bother even looking at scores or reviews for those games. Nintendo is starting to put demos out anyway, which I always find is an odd choice. Like with me specifically as a consumer, demos, I love demos, but they're the worst thing you can do for your game for me if you want money out of me because demos are why I stopped buying FIFA. As soon as EA started putting out demos of FIFA each year, I stopped buying FIFA because I realized it was the same game each year. Um, I tried out Mario versus Donkey Kong. Did not enjoy it, so did not buy that game. Mm. Tried out Peach Showtime, the demo. Did not enjoy it, so did not buy it. Had they not put out those demos, fair chance I may have bought those games. Fair dinkum. <laughs> but now that I actually tried them and found them incredibly boring... Not for me. Didn't buy them. Hmm. Didn't yeah. buy them. Who else, is, like, who else is up in keep, the super chat keep world? Keep bringing those demos and saving me some money. Um, <laughs> Assassin Entertainment. Xbox will turn it around when they start marketing Call of Duty on the box for the holiday. And yeah, when first party games start getting consistent. Again, I don't think that's going to matter. No, There's all that games coming exclusive. up non-stop on... The thing that the actual people who are into this... The, the main thing they can do, Call of Duty will help, but being able to get through what Game Pass actually is to more to the casual audience. It's might require a huge marketing spend. They don't think it's worth it. I knew they, they do a lot of it in YouTube and TikTok and Twitch, but if they can ever get through to the casual audience, just how much you can have access to if you get a Series S and Game Pass... They're That's the main the wrong thing. Like, seriously, Microsoft, if anyone from marketing is watching, instead of saying, play it day one on Game Pass, at the end of your ads for a game that means nothing to anyone, yeah. right? Yeah. unless they go and Google, what's Game Pass? You need an ad that actually explains the value game you passes. get to the parents and, and the and the people that would yep. buy it, right? Like yep. do it film film it in a in a mom and pop store, whatever you want to do. I know that's a US thing, mom and pop stores, but you film it in there and you have someone going to buy a console and you have the person behind the desk go, Oh, well have you heard of this? And just run the spiel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You just pay this like Netflix. You even use those buzzwords because everyone has Netflix and then boom. People understand so what Game dumb. Pass is. They wonder they wonder why Game Pass isn't growing, right? Because oh Everyone with a console and all the hardcore gamers already have Game Pass. So then why do you keep advertising Game Pass to us then? You keep advertising Game Pass yeah, to people we know who what don't it is. know what it is or already subscribe to it. Advertise it to the people who have no idea what the, the fuck it is. The main place they do that is through Samsung and their phones and their TVs with the but cloud app. That's but dumb. It's not, but it, that's dumb. Needs to be more. Any, any game advert on TV, when I see play it day one on Game Pass at the end, I'm like... It I know what that is, but it means yep. nothing to anyone. Nothing. Game Pass could just be, well, is, that the, is that the console name? Like, yeah. you is need that the name to of Xbox just... now? Is it called Game Pass? Like, <laughs> I sh when I go to the cinema, when I go to the cinema and watch a movie, I should be seeing a Game Pass ad there. Yeah. Or, or, or on like, free to air TV. The other ad they could do is like a really, like, have you ever seen the advert for Durex? With the dad walking the kid around the supermarket, I want bon bon, and he starts having a fucking tantrum in the middle yeah, of the supermarket, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. kid's just there, and the dad's like, "Oh god, this is horrible," and it just says, "Use a condom," and it's brilliant, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that's what they should do. They should have a kid whinging about, "I want this game, buy it for me, buy it for me, buy it for me," and then you know, oh, but the don't worry, $70. son, it's the on Game, game Pass. Dollars, that's right. Like, yeah, no, perfect. That's how you Some, sell this fucking something thing. Something that gets the message across to the parents. It's like, oh, I don't have to keep paying seventy dollars each time exactly. they want to play this game. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. Honestly, just, God damn. If you want it to grow, advertise it in a way to make it grow. Stop advertising it to the people that already have it and know what it is. Like, yeah. It, there's like the hardcore gamers already know what it is. So if we haven't subscribed yet. No ad you do for it is going to change their mind because they know what it is. Advertise it to the people that have no idea. Anyway. Good good tangent, though. No. Microsoft, that, that if you're watching, we'll, we'll, our checks should be in the post <laughs> from the marketing team. Too logical for such a <laughs> stupid company. So dumb. Um, trillions. 
But not, you say not that, only they like, had Nick, com- like rich companies, do- like rich companies lean into their monopolies and shit all the time to make money. That doesn't make them smart. In fact, I would argue that companies like Apple and Microsoft are extra dumb because they have those monopolies and still fail in so many areas. Isn't like aren't Mac aren't Apple sales of everything but the iPhone pretty much down? And well, they're just the leaning into down. the iPhone more and more. No, the iPhone's going down, down too because people have but great they're a devices. Dollar they company, don't need to so change. aren't they smart as then? Oh well, yeah, because they made all that money, and now they're figuring out other ways to try. And... The problem is when you make products that are too good. People don't feel the need to upgrade all the time. It's why you see shitty t- um, refrigerators and microwaves now, because the old ones lasted so much longer and you didn't have to keep buying them. And now you do. You have to replace them every five years or so at the most. Half, half the time you got to replace them every three years because they break. And you, it's like Le- leveraging monopolies to make a lot of money doesn't make you a smart company. Just say. Jordan White. Just finished my dinner event. Did <clears> you guys <throat> already talk about how much fun Planet Zoo is? No. Executive producer, Jordan White. Yes. And, I don't know what uh, Planet Zoo is. It's a, it's a zoo sim game, zoo tycoon type thing. Uh, oh, okay. We haven't because none of us have played it, but we are bringing you a, a written review because we have review code, um, even though it's out. <laughs> um, but the person that's reviewing it for the team has put in something like 100, 300 hours on PC? 200, so 230. 30, 230, yeah. something like that. Yeah, he's put in a lot of hours. So you can expect a very comprehensive uh, thought of the game as he just checks out the performance on the Xbox version <laughs> before he writes his his thoughts up. So expect that soonish. Maybe next week. We'll see. Uh, Cheeseworks, Thanks, member Jordan. for one month. Uh, many outlets would cease to exist without the hate farm from Xbox. Yeah, they would yeah, have again, to become I'm guys. I'm just genuinely sets. curious. Like I'd be fascinated to see where all their clickbait and rage bait and hate would go because they love PlayStation too much. So where does it go? It has to go somewhere because it's there regardless. Right now, Microsoft is the perfect outlet for them. But where does it go if Microsoft's gone? I'm curious. Yeah. Genuinely. Um, but yeah, I just... I don't know, man. The whole thing is just... I don't know. I feel like at some point, Microsoft will just be like CBF. Can't CBF. be fucked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. CBF. I hope not. Like, I like. the problem is now that... Microsoft, there is another problem. The problem is that Xbox is so big and has so much scrutiny and is making so much money and has had so much investment put into it that it's got to answer for a lot more you know that there were benefits to a degree of being the garage band and now well (laughs) now there's also some negative thing that's the (laughs) other thing that worries me about xbox now like now that like before microsoft never used to care about xbox to the point that xbox could just do whatever they wanted yeah but now that they're supposedly right up there as a pillar that means more of the microsoft people getting involved yeah. I don't think they and could the do number... what they wanted. Like it was no, always I mean we're being facetious. But like, it, it was but always you... a struggle to get proper funding and everything. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I just I feel like now, now that they've got a seat at the table, like I feel like there's gonna be a lot more number crunching. A there's lot there's more, more scrutiny. There's more scrutiny, scrutiny. a lot yeah. more just Microsofty decisions being made for Xbox now. <laughs> Micro squishy, like, tiny squishy yeah. decisions. <laughs> yeah, tiny squishy. Like more just red feel tape like... to have to worry about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, just, I think that's like, what I, I really mean. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them right now. Like I would not be shocked if right now somewhere inside Microsoft, one of those number crunchers, like a Tim Stewart or someone like that, is like. Looking at the numbers, just look again, you know, those contextless numbers that Microsoft loves going, yeah, why should we be making hardware anymore? Oh. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's run a, re- let's, let's run a report. Let's just do it. Let's just do a, uh, uh, let's just ask, run the numbers on what would happen if we just stopped making consoles. Uh, oh, numbers just go to brrr. see what the numbers look like and the numbers go brrr. 
Brrr, and then they're like, oh, look, the numbers went up when we stopped spending billions on R&D and this and that. Like, I just, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that is going on. Would not be surprised whatsoever. It's just, it's a very Microsoft thing to do now that Xbox is a pillar. Yeah. Do you know what All I right. mean? Like, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know what no you mean. I'm with you. I'm with you. I understand. Um, all right. Okay. Now I, I skirted over all the negative news because honestly, as much as it's horrible that companies are letting people go and you know, like it's so uh, heartbreaking to talk about. So we'll, we'll fo instead of focus on the one positive, you know, Sega let a bunch of people go sad times, but relic entertainment, uh, escapade, um, and became independent with a, uh, uh an investor of some sorts, an investment team a or rich something investor. like that. Um, which is great because it means that they have escaped cuts and things of that nature. And I like the, this trend. Instead yeah. of shutting a studio down, well, let, them, they did let them go and see what they can do by themselves. And it was the second time we've seen it this week with Toys for yes. Bob doing the same thing. You know, because, yep. you know, again, perhaps they were sitting there as a studio, as a team thinking, Oh, please don't put us still on the Call of Duty farm. We don't want to oh, want to make God. our own games. Well, and they they had the conversation, and boom, they have a publishing deal with Xbox. Is it Spyro Four? Canadian YouTuber, Canadian guy A, seems to think yeah, so. Canadian guy, eh? <laughs> he does and, say it's Spyro Four. So you do you do say that they uh, avoided cuts, but like Embracer divesting Gearbox to take two. Um, yeah, that's toys, one. For, toys for Bob going independent in Relic. They all actually had cuts along with that. Yes, See, I saw that after the Microsoft... Gearbox announcement, a few people were like, oh, I've been let go um, yeah. from Gearbox. So, you know, there have been... Microsoft, wouldn't you want Relic and merge them with World's Edge? I genuinely, I think everything is on, like, considering what Microsoft are now currently experimenting with and, and the money side of things and the way oh, the industry is. I'm not expecting it to happen. Acquisitions are kind of off the table right now, I think. I don't think they're... Unless some golden opportunity comes along that can't be yeah. passed up, they're I think still, it's very unlikely. They have so much oh, time yeah, I left. I don't expect anything. Integrating Bethesda, probably not done. In integrating ABK, nowhere near done. Like, it's it's just... It's a lot of time and a lot of money. It was a billion dollars in a quarter on integrating ABK already. Like, it's... Oof. It's not cheap. Oof. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. Were, we were hoping... We were hoping that, like... Oh, and now that they've got all these studios, they can take a few of them off the COD machine. I don't think that's happening at all. I don't think I so, think, buddy. I think, if anything, they're going to double down on the COD machine, if yeah. anything. Like, that's why Toys for Bob wanted probably wanted independence, because they were being asked to stay on the COD machine. And they're like, man, we don't want to do that anymore. And yeah. Microsoft's like, well, we've got to justify this shit now. So we need you on the COD machine. Who knows? But either way, it's worked out great for the guys that actually are working at Toys for Bob. And if it means more other games that are different, yeah. great. Sign me up. I'm all Raven for it, next, more platformers. Raven, next, please. Raven, ask for your independence, please, Raven. I, I wonder how many people please, from Raven. Raven are from the Raven of 10 years ago, though, dude. Like, oh. you got to think about if there's these anyone things. left. If there's anyone know. left from X-Men Origins Wolverine, just leave. Please leave. <laughs> It's not a super chat, Leaving. but I, I would like to point out this from Gary Barwick. They would be better if they were called Toys for Everyone because there are not enough Bobs for that business <laughs> strategy. Yeah. Bob Lawford would be able to play them. Mm. Executive producer. That's well, just I mean, him. What, what was the name Bob. of the head of ABK? Bobby. Bobby Kotek. Toys, Toys for Bob. Bob. That's who they <laughs> Maybe were that's why I bought them. That's for, for me. <laughs> Muhammad Sharez with a super chat. Phil made a great choice. Acquiring money making MTX games and companies plus Game Pass, another MTX light system to protect Xbox and making games. Yeah. It, so it's like people, uh, that article also talked about how it's like, well, what if they had instead of spending $70 billion on ABK, had it invested in 230 Spider Man games? And I'm like, that's not how it works at all. Who are the 230 teams that are going to make a Spider-Man level game? What's the actual, what's the ROI on each game? They're all different. Like you're spending 200 million on 230 games. No, they don't want different. Games. They want, are they, they all want making more of the same over and over and you're over. You're completely mate. saturating your entire platform 
if you put out that many games. You can't do it. Like, you don't see movie companies putting out 150 movies in a year. They won't make it's money. Like They'll dumb. all eat each other. But it's like, also, you're also not spending $70 million. You are shifting cash that's losing value into something that instantly starts making you money. Like, that's yeah. the benefit of buying an asset versus investing in something brand new. Like, it's, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. Rolling. I just brain. checked my DMs rolling. I just checked my DMs, mate, and there's nothing about Persona in Fortnite here. That doesn't mean it's not happening. Like, it's not like I've announced every single Fortnite collab ever. It's like there's plenty that have happened <laughs> without me leaking them. Like, so just because I don't have any DMs about Persona in Fortnite, that does not mean it's not happening. Like, although I do have some DMs about some other. <laughs> oi, oi. Um, there's oh, yeah. one more. There's one more super Ooh. chat. <laughs> Int El Chapo. G'day, lads. I think. Thanks, mate. Keep me honest here. Jesse was on uh, the PNX show mm -hmm. with Int El Chapo earlier this week for a, a very broad discussion. I watched mm -hmm. a bit of it um, about video games and all my sorts mic of things was the very blown out. Yeah, I did. I did wonder. I was like, oh, should I? I, don't, I think I didn't think I watched it live, though. I, I should have. I would have DM'd you if I'd spotted it live. It was yeah. a bit blown. Out. Breaker, breaker. <laughs> that <laughs> podcast was on seven a.m. this morning, wasn't it? Yesterday. No, it was. Yeah, yesterday. In the morning for I swear you. Yes. It said seven a.m. Sunday, but maybe I'm wrong. Nope. It was. Maybe it was seven a.m. My Saturday. Thursday night, your Friday morning. Ah, oh, okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, we saw a new game announced uh, with Marvel Rivals. Ooh, I actually like how this looks. It looks fine, it, but it also just looks like, no offense, Marvel Rivals dev team. It's not my kind of thing. It just looks like yet yeah, another hero shooter that just happens to be attached to a very popular intellectual property. That's right. I get to be Iron Man. Yeah, so I get why you would love it. Like it, for me, it does I get nothing. To be Iron Man, like zero interest. But I, you can you know, have I the Hulk well. throw his radioactive semen at you, and you do a big green Ooh, beam. Okay, now I'm in. Yeah. Uh, now Ooh, I'm in. Now go. I'm on board. The destructibility. Hulk, green goo. Everyone kept saying Overwatch because it had a, a kind of similar clean look to Overwatch, but it was very much more Paladins, I think, overall. And then that big focus on destructibility, uh, a, a cool initial roster. I think we'll have. It is supposedly coming to consoles. They're just talking about PC now because that's where their test is going to be. But we'll have Spider Man mm. on Xbox. Should be neat. Finally, yeah, been a while. I saw the trailer and I'm like, man, this game looks cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't get what all the hates about this game. It's not cool. hate. I do. I do not have hate. I do not have hate for it. Um, but yeah, it's just. Eh. I'm just eh about it. Um, <laughs> it's good to know. I've just seen a tweet that's really made me laugh. <laughs> I can't say it because it... I don't want to point people to it, but it's it's, it's from someone it in the industry. Good. Um, as long as it feels good to play. Thank you. If I had to guess, they're, they're going to go full Fortnite, and this will be on mobile and everything. Like it's Netties; they are a mobile company normally, so I bet you this will be oh, yeah. everywhere. It'd be crazy not to put it on console. Well, no, it's going to be on console. I'm talking about mobile. I think the uh, it'll be. On phones too. Probably. It's also got Bay, uh, uh, Galactus Lady, Waifu Galactus. Why not? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Go along with my Chun Li obsession in Fortnite. Mm. Oh boy, you're gonna get cancelled. Skins. That means you get to go I on a ton of shows skins. and make a lot of money. I guess. And I just go back to Fortnite and play in with Chun Li, no matter how many skins I buy. Rule thirty four. Love it. Uh, Wait, so it was you at that goddamn <laughs> friggin' Street Fighter tournament. The nude mod on for Chun Li. Yeah, the nude mod of Chun Li. I was like, I need to check out this video. Look at this everyone. For research. For research. I can't show the video, but you can search Nude Chun Li Tournament don't, on don't YouTube and you can just see the clip where <laughs> the guy forgot to turn his nude mod off at a, an actual oh, tournament. Oh, so funny. Yeah. It was so funny. Hilarious. Because it's, 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 it's it. nothing. It is completely unclothed and just in front of yeah. 100 people. Just like, Chun, it's just Chun Li in Street Fighter Six, flat out naked. You just die inside of it. The, that's 
and it's uh, one of the big reasons Capcom went so anti-mod that specific <laughs> incident right after that they're like Jesus Christ you horny shits oh. <laughs> they they put they put attractive ladies in their games and a lot of men like attractive ladies um i just put Can't. i just put a topic i'm just going to throw it in there before we talk about the last thing um in the private chat Jesse, i don't know if you want to show this on the on the screen briefly it's your call um but uh sarah oh, bond uh tweeted on march 29th so yesterday uh so great speaking to hashtag team xbox and it's it's got uh, sarah on the stage being filmed camera crew all around yeah i saw that and you know what's interesting is it's so great speaking to team xbox so this this feels like an internal conversation um perhaps that that's going on um i wonder i wonder you know nothing like, burger but why why be on stage for it? It's like why wouldn't you just do a town hall or a teams call like if you're speaking because, to the team? Because Microsoft. Yeah, maybe. That's probably the official Xbox podcast. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Well, no, no, the stage, the Xbox stage. They do a it looks they like the host. stage they used for uh, Look, one of the showcases. Surely, surely the last few years or so should have taught you not to get hyped up at these little teasers from xbox and xbox exists. oh god i'm not hyped up but i could see the chat asking questions so i was just bringing it up i'm as just a topic saying of like don't don't look too much into stuff like this it's just an internal it's, memo it, essentially but it's as a video probably the yeah. most benign nothing <laughs> burger DM you've Eden ever seen or in Megan your life and ask them Megan make game pass it's it's just, it'll be nothing it'll be absolutely nothing um, i wouldn't worry about it and then the last thing I have on the on the list, really, uh, was a report from uh, our good friend, Mr. Tom Henderson, uh, via Insider Gaming, uh, which went into detail uh, about X Defiant and uh, some seriously toxic work culture, crunch, and years and years of delay. Um, yeah, um, a story it's a, so it's an interesting report. Spicy that it got him. Um... <laughs> DMCA struck by Ubisoft. On really? YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, what, what a way to confirm the whole thing is true. Yeah. <laughs> time for people to yell at me. How come I eat on stream? It's like, because we start streaming right at dinner time. Like, what Maccas. Am I do? Woo. I had Maccas for breakfast yesterday. In Maccas mm. in Australia has a BLT muffin for breakfast. It's wow. quite nice. I had it yesterday. Uh, I'll I'll keep nice. people from gagging and I'll I'll turn my camera off while I eat. I had that BLT muffin right before we played Halo. Oh. It was nice. I like that oh. a lot. No, I like that a lot. Um, if you want to read BLT about it, muffin. Um, I will put the X Defiant story in the chat. I mean, I I don't really want to go into detail about it, so I'm not going to for fear of also being DMC I struck. Put it in the so chat. I'm You're not... so slow. All right. All right. <laughs> I thought you were having your dinner. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, go have a read if you're intrigued by it. It's quite a lengthy read. Um, did any of you play X Defiant? The beta, any of the beaters? Nah. I did. It's actually pretty good. I, yeah, I it, honestly it didn't mind right. it. It just looked like another another shooter, you know? Like, okay, oh, it's great. going it's going straight after COD. Like it feel, it's trying to feel exactly like COD feels, and they do a pretty good job of it. Hmm. I I didn't mind it to be honest. Uh, I didn't like its game structure. Um, like I just wanted to play Deathmatch, and I didn't get a lot of chances to play Deathmatch. Um, but other than that, it like felt pretty good. I didn't mind cool. it. Cool. Cool. I'll keep an eye on it. See what happens when yeah. it comes out. Is it going to be a free to play? Is it going to be a? Is it a Warzone They'd type have thing? to be. Or? They'd have to be, wouldn't they? At this point, hmm. and try and make their money through. Like, Ubisoft's got a lot of properties, right? Like, it, the way I would go with them is make it free to play, and just sell skins. Like, you could make money selling a Sam Fisher skin. For X Defiant, you could make money selling a Prince of Persia skin. That's uh, true. That's very true. Look at Rainbow Six Siege. They they very much know <laughs> yeah. that. 
You can be a couple yeah. of Halo They've got a Halo in skin in Rainbow Two. Six Siege, don't they? Chief they and yeah. one more. I forget who. Just F- Fortnite has shown you all the way to do it. Like, I don't understand. Like, you have these companies that show you successful blueprints, and then you sit there and go, nah, I'm going to scrap this blueprint and do my own shitty one. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, <laughs> you've been shown how to do it. Just, I don't um, how do you think Fortnite became what it is? It just copied PUBG. And said, oh, this thing's real <laughs> successful. Let's copy it. And they did. And then they found success. Like, I, mm. preaching to the choir, anyway. bro. Anyway. Um, now, if they we... sell X Defiant, if they sell it for money, it will flop. Yeah, exactly. No one will buy it. We'll, so we'll find out. It is Ubisoft. Yeah. Um, now, before we get into uh, Name a Game, which would be funny because, you know, Jesse's like hurriedly eating and he'd have to start doing lots of producery things. Um, just a quick bit of housekeeping. One, we've got 245 plus of you guys watching us right now. It would do me a solid and, and just hit that hit that like button uh, if you're enjoying the show. We really do appreciate it. If you really, really, truly, utterly love everything that we do and all the extra content that we're starting to produce, um, it is working, you know, numbers go, uh, you can help us directly by the becoming a YouTube member right here. But if you really want to be in the cool kids club, head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox era, because all of the cool giveaways and stuff that happen across the forums and the discord, they're exclusive to our Patreon and YouTube members. Um, you know, like we, we really look after you and you guys get loads of cool merch in return. So, you know, like why not? Um, and to answer top, and Torn Raptor, who were like, we need a higher tier. Uh, we, we, we've got some ideas in mind, but you guys are insane. Um, but currently the working title is Grand Benefactor. Um, it's because I, this is the most regal fucking thing I could think of. Master Chief. <clears throat> oh, we could go Halo with it. Hey. Ooh. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we do that. Um, yeah, happy, happy to discuss. You, you, we can make this as extravagant as you want. Um, one thing that I've been uniquely surprised at, and I say this without trying to toot our own horn, is despite how, honestly, relatively cheap our Patreon can be, and also how much stuff we actually give out in terms of not just content on the channel, on the website, um, the services we provide like Day One, where you can track your Game Pass games, Forge Era if you're into Forge and Halo maps, or... Uh, the Discord and the forums and everything else is we actually give you merch as well. And yet when I was doing lots of research of other similar patrons uh, or Patreon programs, I am stunned at how little some places do anything or give anything. And I'm like, are we, are we idiots? No, we just love our community. Um, so how if many, you want to support How many types it, of Spartans are there? You know, uh, the Spartans, twos, threes, and fours. Why? So why don't we go Master Chief? You want me to Spartan rename every two, single Patreon? Spartan 2, Spartan 3, Spartan 4, Lambent. And ODST like, and then Marine. ODST. We're trying to get yeah, away from know, using we, we, other people's IP. And so yeah, we I'm make trying money to lean on. out of it. We've got our own yeah, brand. Think about now. it. If you name the highest tier Master Chief, everyone's like, man, I want to be the Master, master Chief. Master <laughs> it's, it's It is tough once money is involved if you use IP. That's when they get mad. Look at the Nintendo. other bit the other bit of housekeeping i just wanted to bring up is yes the second print run of the celebrating 20 years of xbox book uh has not succeeded which is a massive shame we were probably too honest about the delivery costs like yeah you include all the packaging and the time and and the you know the bubble wrap and the wrapping and all of that stuff and plus the fees exorbitant fees uh that some of these places charge to ship stuff around the world it's expensive and we didn't want to do what we did with print run number one, which was severely under estimate and then get absolutely fucked by it, which is exactly what happened. So we were super upfront. People didn't like it. There's not much I can do about it. However, if you're watching and you still really desperately want the book, two things. One, everything ordered prior to Thursday this week has been sent out and is on its way to you. It's all been shipped. All right, you should have had emails, etc. If you haven't, reach out to me. But I've gone and shipped it all myself. 
if you are watching this and think, oh, I really wanted that book, good news. There are still some left. They're here in the dark. I don't think you can really see them. Um, there's a few Overshield ones. There's no collector's edition ones. There's lots of standard edition ones. If you really want it, our Patreons at the moment have exclusive access to the store where you can buy them. So all you have to do is join the Patreon. You'll be able to see it and you'll be able to get it. Um, we will at some point in the near future lift that requirement and just let everyone go nuts. Um, but there you go. Yes, Nick, you have a cat. I've finished now. You yeah. may talk about the cat. I don't want to talk about the cat. I don't like this cat. <laughs> okay. You just you seem to be making a big deal That's... about the fact he exists. You've disturbed him from his spot. Her. Her. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, let's play uh, let's play an any game. Buttons it. Yeah, I forgot now, to do the buzz in live. Oops. That's okay. But while you're doing that, obviously, as I just expanded upon, we absolutely adore all of our patrons. And one of the cool perks of being a Patreon member for Xbox Era is every week we play Name a Game, which is where we take names of popular games or not so popular, in fact, quite obscure and really difficult to guess uh, from across the world. Um, and we have to try and guess them through Jesse's weird cinnamon... Cinnamon? Cinnamon. 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 Mm, Cinnamon. Delicious game names. Cinnamon. <laughs> we could do it. We could do the highest tier as Master Chief. C H E E F. Master Chief. Chief. Master Chief. Cheeks. Master Let's Mighty, do that instead. Master Mighty Keith. <laughs> um, but every week My we base. play for a Patreon member at random um, so they can win a game code. Yeah, we do lots of giveaways, but we also give codes to those Patreon winners. So if you want to be in a chance to win, all you need to do is head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Zero. We love you guys. All right. Uh, Jesse, what's the uh, what's the Crying thing this Sister week? 2. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. In fact, before Jesse tells us a theme, who are we playing for this week, Nick? Are you ready yep. to answer yep. that question? We are playing. I'm playing for law executive producer Lopel. And nice. John is playing for Master Lee, PhD. Lovely, lovely. Jesse, what's the theme this week? Games Nick would hate because they are full of cinematics. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. That's you probably every game. Though. That's every That's like game. Every yeah. game. So pretty I'm still much doomed. It's, it was the list of games with the longest cinematics and then i found other games known for their story more than their gameplay i've, I've got to think about how jesse would twist the words of metal gear solid 4 <laughs> that could be in there it wasn't only uh, longest cinematics it was just like what has super long cinematics what's known for its story but has shit gameplay and a whole lot of other stuff so oh no metal gear solid 4 is an amazing game to play when you get to play it the very small amount when of when you get to play it <laughs> <clears throat> But 15 right. minutes of gameplay. Amazing. Number one. I'm going to have to put this into chat because it is it is so long. Yeah, yeah. Private chat. <laughs> it is conclusive creativity. Oh. What in What's in the box movie? Emergency essence. It's in the box. Oh, yeah, yeah. Conclusive um. creativity. It's in the box movie. Emergency conclusive, essence. Conclusive creativity. Nick. What's in the box movie? Final Fantasy Seven. Um uh, shit. Final Fantasy Seven. Go on, chat, help him out. Start, start the timer. <laughs> it is an option. <laughs> Emergency Spin -off. Es essence. Five. Four, spin off. I don't know. Two, I don't know the one. rest of it. John for the steal, or no? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I just thought for, I was thinking Final the Fantasy other, VII the remake other... or Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, or I, I don't know. I can't think of any. Like I was thinking of the movie and Final there's, Fantasy there's one VII game with like Crisis, Crisis or something core. like that. Oh fuck! <laughs> What's that? Yeah, okay, I, I, I remember Crisis. Crisis, it was, Crisis uh, Sister Two. It just came out as a. They did a port. 
or a remaster of it, essentially. Mm. Crisis Core. One star Zach. I knew it was Final Fantasy. When you said what's in the box, I'm like, seven. <laughs> what's in the box? Seven. <laughs> and I'm really like, Final way. Fantasy seven. But like, I... I did only do eight, I'm so you guys got to get these right. Okay. Number Awkward. two <laughs> is Fiefdom Kindness Triple. Can you put it in private chat? Please? I did already. Sick. In private chat. Kingdom Hearts 3. Correct. It's not in private chat. God damn it. I pressed enter, but it didn't go. There. John got it anyways. Doesn't matter. Private chat's for pussies. All right. One to nothing. Sigma kind of go. Yes, Gov. I can say twat when I'm doing a British accent. I'm not allowed to otherwise. <laughs> Okay. John, you wanker. with the one to nothing lead, the colon the colonist bastard. It, the next one is two words. Those words being, I have to hit enter three times. Dissolution, beaching. Dissolu sick. Death stranding. Correct. Fuck yeah. You can't even cheat when it's that fast. Chat hasn't even seen it yet. He just knew. All right. Well, this could be a short All one. Right. John took my please get these correct. Uh, <laughs> I took it seriously, bro. It. Seriously, thank you very much. I'm awake. I've, I've slept very well the last three days. <laughs> and thank the missus for that. All right. <laughs> the final one, if John gets a sweep, is incredibly long. Being potential accoutrements, commonsensical trinity, traitor devourer. Potential Accoutrements. Commonsensical Trinity. <laughs> Traitor. <you>. Devourer. <laughs> this is supposed to be one of the easier ones. What? Uh, Traitor. Traitor. Devourer. Ah, uh, mate. Oh. Um. Boom. Jack got it. Cisco Roke is so good at these. No, I don't know. Hold on. Oh, hold on to what? I don't know. I didn't say it was starting the timer. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. <clears throat> Commonsensical. Potential accoutrements. Potential. It's not the way you normally think of potential, but it is a correct definitive term. Commonsensical... Trinity. I've got the Trinity part. I know that it's a, you know, whatever, but. I, I, I've got the last part, actually. I think. Then you should have it. Uh, I, I don't. Yeah, but the, the, the top three don't make any sense to yeah, what I know. it is. It don't, they don't literally, like, I don't see. Well, come on, dude. That's the bit I've got. That is the bit I've got. Oh, hold on. Did you get my buzz? Is it Metal Gear Solid oh, 3? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, I was, I was muted. I got your buzz. Is it Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater? Correct. Ah, uh, see, I didn't know it was Metal Gear Solid 3. I would have literally... Neither did I. Gear Solid. I got... I got... I, I wouldn't I have known the 3. three. But I didn't Three. see Metal Gear. Yeah, Metal Gear. So accoutrement gear. Is gear? But what's okay. metal and solid about potential and commonsensical? Look it up. I solid. It's a solid idea. Common it's sense. It's commonsensical. Solid. But why yeah. is okay. potential metal? Why is potential metal? I don't know. Ask Miriam Webster. Okay. I'm going to talk that one up to be I, very confused. I only got Nick. that. I only got that because of Traitor Devourer and 3. That's the only reason I got that, because the first three didn't make sense to me as Metal Gear Solid at all. Okay, I don't have to keep muting. I honestly do not remember. Oh, it's electrode potential. I forget. I don't know. It, it literally is listed as a um, metal. synonym for metal by Miriam Who knows? Next one. Next one. Let's go. Hmm? No, that was it. John wins. No, I'm kidding. All right, I gotta make this one fit. Yes, don't yell at me. Do 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 do. The next one is everything's buzz. Boop boop. People can hear the buzzers now. I always forget about that. 
The next one is going into private chat first. Similar to a hit of a cigarette about immeasurable assets. What? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay. So hold on, how many words is this game? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five. Five, five words. Similar, Similar to, to a hit on a cigarette hit about. Hit of a cigarette. Hit on a cigarette about one word. Immeasurable hit of a assets. cigarette about. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Are we going to be tied? Oh. Man. Uh, oh, hold on. The old wording or the new wording of this game? There is no Hello? old wording. There is. There's old wording and there's new wording. Nick. Uh, like a dragon. In, uh, infinite wealth. Correct. Hit of a cigarette. Puff the magic dragon. Uh, a okay. drag of a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about oh, I was on. thinking puff the magic <laughs> dragon. <laughs> it works, it works. But also, works, I mean, it's, it works it's not Yakuza end. anywhere. It is only... Yes, that's like what I was like. Old wording or new wording? Mm. Yakuza is... It yep. became like a dragon from Yakuza. Well, it was always like a dragon there in Japan. Over it's, there, yes. Just, just like, like a dragon Biohazard and Resident everywhere. Evil. Yeah. yeah All right. Okay. Tide. The very awake Shit. man is now very asleep. The final, the final word is... Foreigner novella. One word. Foreigner novella. One word. One word. This is a this oh. is a toughie, mate. I'm not no, 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 it's not. No, it's not. Um, foreigner novella. Mm -hmm. Another win for Nick. It sounds like. Yeah, I, ugh, mate. Ugh, foreigner, foreigner. It's got a bit of a home field advantage. <sighs> Wait, lots of cutscenes though. So it's not the game I'm thinking of. Sick. I'm just guessing here, but the is this Xenosaga? It is, and no one in chat has said it. Fuck yeah! Oh! Wow! I thought that I was would be the one that stumped you. <laughs> Foreigner, I was alien. Say, I was like Xenomorph. I was say, <laughs> no, I was gonna say something story, a novella is. A, Oh, like a vagrant uh, story or vagrant something. story? Yeah. I was going to say something like... Almost could work. Or even... Actually, the first yeah, one that popped into my head falling. was Cave Story for some reason, but I'm like, no, not Cave and <laughs> Foreigner. <Yeah. laughs> Arguably, the only reason I, I got that is because I rewatched the uh, new Alien movie trailer today. And if I hadn't have had Foreigner, Alien, Alien, Xenomorph in my head... And I was like, I've <gasps> used Xeno... <laughs> I've used Foreigner for Xeno before with like Xeno Clash. So... Yeah. Wow. All right. Phew. Wow. Master wow. Lee PhD. Contact Jesse on the forums Contact or on me. the Discord. Yep. And collect a game from the list of games that we shall provide to you as the winner of Name a Game. All Two right. more. Two final ones. What? Oh, quick. yeah. Shit. We're playing for funsies. Yep. Okay. The last... Can I start looking at chat now? No. The last two oh. are <laughs> Luminary Waters colon The Closing Wish. Sick. Uh, Ocean Star, The Last Hope. No. You got all the words right, but in the uh, wrong Star order, Ocean, The, the Last Hope. Sorry. Yeah. It's all the, it's uh, all the right it words, right. Nick. I mean. Come on. Give me a break. Yeah. You didn't even buzz anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And one I final one. My Final Fantasy VII one then. <laughs> but you didn't say all the right words. You, didn't, you never said Crisis or Core. All right. Final one is... Stories of Awakening. Three words. Stories of Awakening. A game I looked at reviewing and noped out of immediately. Nick? Tales of Arise. Correct. And with that, nice. Nick has pulled ahead and won. What? Wait, what? <laughs> I demand a recount! Makes up for the final and rip off. Uh... Rip off. You didn't say Crisis Core. He said the words. <laughs> Uh, well, there you have it. God. That is the name of the game. Now into wow. our 750 GGs. community paragraphs. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot of community questions this week. Let's dive right in and see if we can finish them up in 40 minutes or less. No, uh, that was a truly awful 
American impression. I wasn't trying to. I was just mm-hmm. saying, don't we have to? I know you don't like our patrons, but don't we have to <laughs> thank our patrons? Uh, I don't know, man. I've, I've waxed lyrical always about how amazing they are. You always try to skip. Always you're never waxing gonna, you're never how gonna amazing they are. You're never going to escape those allegations. You're never going to escape those allegations. It's almost like I play skipping. up to it in some fashion, you're, right? It's you're almost always like trying to skip over. Almost like I take part in part the joke. Of it like the joke is the is part of the fun of the show. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. almost like it's all. You yeah. Know. Okay. Very Mr. likely. What's his name in Friends? If you're upset about it, then it's a joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's time for Community Questions, the part of the show where our wonderful, brilliant and incredible patrons who support us week in, week out, get to ask this panel of esteemed video game pundits their thoughts across a variety of subjects to, you know, have you ever pooped yourself or which is better? Metal Gear Solid 3 or Metal Gear Solid 4? We're going to answer all these kinds of things right now. And if you want to become one of those people, head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox era. And if you do, Nick. we're going to do this. I'm going to call John Greg Kinnear from now on. Okay, what do we got this week, Nick? I'm going to call John Greg Kinnear. You're just, you're just Benjamin Hobart. If it's if you're upset, then it's a joke. <laughs> uh. Oh shit! Uh, God, Blind Riot knew all along. <laughs> that was that. Good, that's a good one. That got okay, me. I was, I was gonna play it off, but that worked. Okay. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> he knew, mate. Oh, At the mate. inside track, he, he knew deep down. Despite okay. Him. Uh, first question <laughs> Mr. Hipshot Hey everyone This one's for Nick You should talk about how cool it is That Grandia HD collection is on Xbox We might not have had much time to play it yet But this is one of the coolest Out of nowhere surprises recently for me Can't wait to check it out But yeah Nick, why is Grandia cool? He's to already talked about it, him, next question To be honest with you Mr. Hipshot uh, I... I played Grandia 2 when it came out on Dreamcast. So we're talking literally 22 years ago. I, I don't remember a great deal about it. I only remember liking it. That's, that's, the, that's one of the only things I remember about Grandia. Um, I was watching a long play of it before the show went live and I was, stuff started to come back to me. It just looks like your very traditional JRPG. So I'm not sure how much I'll like it in 2024. Um, I have concerns it may not have aged the best. That or Skies of Arcadia, which I also loved. Um, but yeah, I've downloaded it. I'll jump in and I'll see how it holds up 22 years later. Because <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I love Blue Dragon too. Speaking and of which... which- yeah, great Blue Dragon theme on Xbox. I've already abandoned the Avowed one and switched over to the Blue Dragon one, and it looks so good. It's so, so, so good. Blue Dragon is what I would have wanted home console Pokemon to be. Blue Dragon. And visually, mm-hmm. Blue Dragon totally holds up. Mm. Yeah, it's visually. a gorgeous game. Absolutely and that is a 360 game, and that holds up today. Yeah, Blue Dragon, stunning. Was game. that an enhanced one? Stunning. I think it was. No, I no? don't think it is. No, I think I think it's just native. That's just straight up beautiful by itself. If it was enhanced, can you imagine how good it would look? Hmm. God, it would hold up against today's games. <laughs> um, Jesse, brother. Evening, squires. Jess, I feel shame. I know I said I wanted to try Dragon's Dogma 2, but after a few good tries, it just was not the game for me. Much like Baldur's Gate 3, which people also keep saying is amazing. I simply couldn't see it. And John, I thought your Snow Day review was genuinely honest. Not that bullshit, brutally honest crap that people like Mr. Matty or Dreamcast guy claim to be gracing us with. And whoever accused you of being an Australian, I can prove you're not. Because when you're talking about something, you say a bit... Hold on. When you're talking about something being a lot, you say loads instead of heaps. True, yeah, that's right. True story. Heaps. I say that loads. Yeah, <laughs> you do. You say it heaps. 
<laughs> what? I say loads. My, what are you talking about? My question this week is if there is an actual Xbox handheld in the future. There will be. What sort of memory and battery life do you see it having? Or more importantly, want it to have? Well, as a Sega fanboy growing up, just brother, I'd like it to be Game Gear Mark II, where the battery lasts like 10 minutes. <laughs> on but that 10 AAAs. minutes, <laughs> that 10 <laughs> minutes is like the greatest 10 minutes, but mate, it's only 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes of Rocket League. That's it. I get one game of Rocket League out of the handheld, and that's all I get. <laughs> that's it. We call that the MSI claw at max settings. Is that how it is? I'm pretty sure it's not very good. Okay. Mine will be docked most of the time anyway. <laughs> you Australians and your love of docking. I, to Just be like fair, my Switch. Uh, on docking, I you know the only really like I don't know about power and and specs. I don't give a shit. It's just got to play Xbox games well. But the one thing I do agree with when it comes to docking is outside of docking to a TV, those little memory cards that go into the back of the series consoles, like Nick says, it's got to have a big old hole where it disappears completely inside. Yeah. So you, you want them to Spring dock loaded. into each other, like kind of like this, right? Like yeah, kind of kind of like. And they go, kind of, kind of like, you go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you just keep doing that. Have your kids done this? Hey, dad, lift, lift this up. Then every once in a while, you change it oh. in the other time, the other side docks. No, yeah. so they, they oh. go, they go, lift this up, put your finger in, stir it, and then they go, thanks for cleaning my toilet. And then you're like, that's it. That's my kids just love a, coming up to me. Is that that's a British a thing? thing? Maybe it is. I don't know. It's a primary school mm. thing, certainly. Anyway, I guess sorry, dock, I digress. I guess my kids, docking isn't that well known because I was making really bad jokes and you guys have no idea. My my kids just say bro a lot. <laughs> like that it's, for some reason they just say bro heaps. Bro. 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 Bro and bro. <laughs> anyway. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put what docking I, I, is in chat. No, in no, Jesse, I totally, chat. it's a sexual innuendo thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I got it. I just chose to ignore it because I'm not a child. <laughs> you don't need to define docking with Urban Dictionary in chat, all right? You don't need to okay. see that shit. Go. Too late. <laughs> all right, next oh, one. for goodness um... sake. <laughs> I didn't need to read those words. I already knew what this was. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a thing I do regularly to just, you know, yeah. feel good about life. Oh, you're, during oh, your yeah, land I forgot parties. about that. Yeah. I forgot that that was the name of that. Yeah. Can't wait I for you guys to come forgot. over in the summer. We're going to have a land party. <laughs> We're going to do some... T <laughs> Lucky for you that I, I have the ability to dock. So do Lucky I, my friend. Guys. I'm American. So do I. Sorry. Okay. Can't partake. Hi, <laughs> Lumji. A makeup and statement on the Halo TV series. So my, oh yeah, I, I saw episode eight. Uh, so my take on the series is this show was pretty cool, but not really a great series as well. But here are things I like and don't like and don't mind. Is this mm. the thing I don't like? The thing I don't like is how the series has gone ultra violent and also the sex scene. I hated that. Throws me off. Sex I enjoyed I enjoyed doing the sex scene though. Hi them. The Would thing you I the like docking scene in in Halo season one. No. Was your wife okay <laughs> with the you thing and I like from the series? <laughs> the thing I like from the series, Charlie Uh <laughs> I like is how it explored around in the Halo universe within the show. I'd argue they did not do that at all. For you gents and the ones watching this show, you guys are going to kill me if I say this. But I didn't have a problem of Master Chief Helmet removed from the series. There I said it. Off my chest. Mm, yep, no PS. problem with it either. No, ever cared. It's a TV show. No, I, I cared. I think in it was off too much. P.S. For Wait. the people that loves Halo, why is it that everyone else, everyone hated Master Chief removing his helmet? And why do every Halo fan want him to keep his helmet on? For what purpose? But your gents take anyway? You like the because games. That's yeah. what the games did. That's no, I, I've got no problem with the helmet coming off. I just think it was off too much. Yeah, but but like, the the question was why do Halo fans want him to keep it on all the time? It's because that's what the games did. Because that's what the games the games are helmet on. Yeah, that's the yeah, character. They're trying to make you feel like you are anyone could be the chief, essentially. It's the Gordon Freeman thing. Um, yeah, 
I watched episode eight, pro- probably the best episode of the season. Yeah. And it, it finally, we're finally, you know, on Halo. <laughs> Like yeah, what the show what the show is about? Like we're finally there after two seasons, so I'm hoping that season three we now at least get close to Halo CE the TV show. <laughs> no, I know it's I know it's not I know it's not going to be exactly that. Well, it's not no chance. They're on Halo now. They'll have call runner structures to, everywhere. They'll do. I I really think it will be. They'll never follow the the skeleton of what the game stories or the even the books were, but they will pull when they feel it works best. Like they, they'll pull pieces. You know what's weird though? I mean, we, we're not spoiling stuff here, are we? Hmm. He, he not he, direct, he, he, but like overall big things. I mean, it's been. A I while. was shocked that they killed who they killed. Yeah, I was like. They're not going to put that in the show. Like I thought that that would have been a good thing to have in the show. Why would they kill them? Because they're going to they'll they'll do it a different way if they end up doing it. But they're also they're not they are not Hold just on. following the games and the books. They will it will be their own take on some stuff, but not all of it. Like that's all. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. It just feels like they keep going out of their way to like make it shit <laughs> and do stupid things like i just it's so weird to me like oh like my wife loved season one was not a massive fan of season two and yeah my, my folks and she's the and target went, audience it's, got, it's, it's Jessie got, claims it's she's the ass. target audience i just your wife and oh, your that's... parents are morons all right next question oh. i don't know i just feel like they just I'm worried they're getting more and more lost. It is what it is. It's not the games. It's not the books. Was, it's not you cannot like it's the nothing. Of Halo it's the nothing. End. You cannot like where they went, but it was a tightly written season that when you go through and watch everything again, it all makes sense where they were going with it. You might not like where they went with it, but it, it wasn't lost and it didn't not make sense. It made sense. It's just not maybe in the way you wanted. It was a tightly written show overall. Like the actual plot and what they were pushing, you just might not like what the plot and what they were pushing. Bitch. Next question. I don't know. Ten k. Roses are red, violets are blue. Sika Mechanico hates the patrons too. <laughs> so true. Hates is capitalized for no reason. I don't allow that. <laughs> I'm gonna fix that. And Sick Mechanico is spelt wrong, so poor effort. To really emphasize the point, you, know, you want to emphasize it, you uh, do the whole thing. There, I'm gonna change it. Whole thing hates. Uh, there, with with Embracer having no business plan and selling off tons of things, publisher studios IP, and Bungie not having a good time, I'm surprised I still see the community members begging for acquisitions. I feel like there's a big market correction happening from expanding too much during the COVID bubble, and I would expect a company like Microsoft to be fiscally responsible during this time. Personally, I think they should work on integrating what they have with ABK and let their studios cook, hitting a good software release cadence before looking to acquire more. Do you all agree? Is there a scenario where revenues start to drop or now grow and Microsoft starts selling off some studios or spinning more off like Toys for Bob? If they do that, then what the fuck was the point in buying it all? IP ownership, arguably, but and yeah, making I agree. Insane amounts of money on Call of Duty and Candy Crush. King, yeah, um, but I agree fundamentally with the point. Yes, well, expect wolves. them not to make acquisitions for a while. They're going to work on doing exactly those things. And their their I'll software probably end up putting all the okay. their software release cadence isn't just new first party stuff. It's also what hits every month on Game Pass, which they've been killing lately. It's been really good, yeah. and they need to market that better because it has been so goddamn good overall. We, we, we touched on Game Pass marketing earlier. Microsoft, go listen to that segment because, you know, Nick and I got some cool adverts in the works. We're here for you, baby. Just let me run your marketing. <laughs> Funny thing, <laughs> they run marketing for all of Microsoft now, so you'd have to do all of Microsoft, and you don't give a shit about most That's of okay. Microsoft. What do you, how are you going to market okay. Microsoft AI Azure to businesses? It's not just to freaking customers. It's that easy. I'll do that shit easy. 
It's the buzzword that you've all been waiting for. Yeah, I know. I'll just start yelling at him. (laughs) NFTs, crypto, yeah, (laughs) metaverse. You just said Web3 that covers all of it. (laughs) You you say that in front of Tim Sweeney, he just turns into that weird avatar with no chin. I'll just yell buzzwords at him for three hours. That'll do it. Idiots. Call of Duty doing a Godzilla Um, X-Kong collaboration. That's a thing. They'll probably. I wouldn't be surprised if they just put all their studios on Call of Duty, three four three <laughs> Ninja Theory, all of them. Just put everyone on Call of Duty. Double fine. <laughs> put out five Call of Duty games a year. That sounds like Microsoft. Four Call of Duty games and three Minecraft games. Yeah. Uh, Hugh. G'day to the two Australians and Jesse. With the news of Xbox potentially becoming more PC-like going forward, I have seen split reactions from the community. Many are excited at the prospect of having more game choice slash options, and others have said they don't want to play on a PC, so would move to PlayStation. Why do you think people still think this way? Because people are silly. I have been really enjoying my time with the new Steam Deck, and in many respects it provides a better, simpler console experience than most consoles. I'm sure you may have already discussed this, but I'm more interested in how they will handle game libraries. For example, will they have a legacy section for console games run through the emulation uh, where they aren't play anywhere? And new purchases will just be PC versions. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, no. Reducing the need to make multiple builds. Now, it's going to be a portable Xbox. Yeah, that's It'll not, be an Xbox. It's not running PC games. It'll be running Xbox games. Because that's the difference. You don't have Xbox. Yeah. You, you have your library of games right now on Xbox. In theory, if if what they're releasing comes to pass, it is a digital, just portable Xbox series with all S. of your stuff. I, imagine if you took a Series S and you plonked console. a screen on top of it and you yeah. you PS portaled some controllers to it and you had yeah, a proton why? pack battery pack to power it. Like just that. Like it's just a Series yeah, why S. Why do people why do people complicate this? It's an Xbox. Because it's the, not gonna be the a talk Windows 11 about, handheld. The talk about from GDC about Phil liking the idea of other storefronts on an Xbox immediately made people Phil think. Phil likes lots of things. But it's also like it's that Phil likes PC because PC is just so open and not restricted and they have so much dominance there overall. And he would like to be able to have that less restricted nature on console because the that's, restricted nature on console doesn't work very well. That's that's just Phil pandering to regulators. Did you notice how the EU didn't come after Microsoft? Mm-hmm. They were the only ones that they didn't come <laughs> they, after. They, know they went the after... My, they went EU went after Apple, Google, uh, was it not Tencent? They were starting to look at Amazon, and there was one other big one, Meta. They went after Meta, didn't go after Microsoft. This is why I told you, Nick. This is why they won't play the bad guy as as enjoyable as it would be for that, us. That's not my but, argument. Yeah. My argument isn't that I think they will or whatever. You just wish they I would. I was saying it. Yeah. I was saying it purely from a selfish perspective and purely from a console warrior gaming landscape. You didn't also call them idiots for them. not doing it, though. And I was like, but you know, you know why. I want them to be bad. Like, because we're sitting there, here we are talking about how, oh, nothing will change the fact that PlayStation's the mainstream console. Well, yes, it will if they made Call of Duty exclusive. But we just know they're never going to do that. But that's what would change it. What you want is for them to have an E3 where Sony and, and Microsoft come out together no. and they're shaking no, and they're shaking hands. And then the guy from Sony turns around and Phil gives him a nut shot and then spits S- dust in his eyes and stomps him on the no. ground and then wins the championship. I, belt. I want I want Phil to end them. Mm-hmm. That is what I oh, want. I mean he he literally kills the other guy on stage. Make make Call of Duty exclusive. Make Minecraft exclusive. Make it all exclusive and end them. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this cat who's now climbing on my PC. That's what I want. Hey, I got one of those. Okay. Sorry, that's loud. Cat's gone. Okay. Good work. Fucking Congratulations. Sh- okay. Shithead. There's no space. Yeah. I made no. There's no space on the side of my computer. He literally pushed my table to the side to squeeze in there and, and pull thirty cables with him. I just want to want to go. <clears throat> yes, but Hugh, to your question, I don't know why Xbox being more PC like would drive people away. I think that's a good thing. I, I actually wouldn't mind it at all. 
if the OS is okay. Um, Omen. This week we learned three things. Number one, Phil wishes the Windows hand the the Windows handhelds acted more like Xboxes. Number two, Phil wants Epic and other game stores on Xbox. Number three, allegedly some publishers question if porting to Xbox is worth it. One publisher, one, one big, big one, and one, one small. very small one. one. Two one human beings, a named one, uh, 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 and apparently released better. a big Two game last beings. year. And, and I looked, I looked through the list of big games from last year, and the only publisher that I reckon complained would have been whoever published Dead Island Two. Who published was Embracer? That? Well, then Embracer's the one that complained. Uh, isn't that on Game Pass now? Yes. Yes. Huh. <laughs> Well, I looked at the list of big games that released last year because that qualifier was released a big game last year. Call of Duty was one. So I don't think it was Activision. Oh, there's Gate 3. There was... That did quite well on Xbox, didn't it? Yeah, it's still on the top I thought eight. that ended up doing really well. Yeah, no, it did. Okay, so I did, I, it couldn't have been them that complained if it ended up doing well. You can find people at almost any company to complain about anything when they're that big. You, it just takes one person having a bad day where they're just annoyed at someone else. That's why the whole secondhand comments on personal conversations between two human beings in companies that have sometimes thousands of employees don't mean that much. And it's very annoying when it then dominates discourse and just becomes a de facto, oh, Xbox is blah, 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 because this one person said it. And it's like, Maybe, but you don't, it doesn't actually mean anything. It's anecdotal. Like, it's the same thing we didn't talk about with all the people who lost their shit because the guy who did Slay the Spire was like, yeah, it seems like Game Pass and Epic deals are drying up. When the reality is, like, Jez looked into it and they have more budget on getting Game Pass deals than ever. There's just a bajillion games. Like, it's, you can't make everyone happy. And they they all probably want to be on Game Pass because they know about the payout. Yeah, and they've got all they've got. A, they're gonna have like forty plus day one games on Game Pass this year that aren't theirs. But they've already. But had like we always 10. said though that eventually the third party stuff will wind down as the first party ramps up. That was always gonna and, happen, and it isn't That's... even winding down. They've got, they're gonna have like forty five things this year in. What five or six of them are first party? It's it, that's a lot for your first party, but they've still got a shit ton that aren't like the, it's pretty similar. The thing that winded down was spending a bunch of money on old triple A's, and even that started back up again, getting a bunch of Capcom and other they, stuff in there. Prob- they're probably not throwing the same amount of money at indies as they once were. Our like- friend Thomas Sala said that he thinks people are over doom and glooming it because right now all investment is down so it's not that everything's just over it's just we had the peak now we've got the valley and we'll we'll start going back up again it's just in the early days of game pass the money for indies was quite good it just might not be as good now because there's so many more indies probably wanting to get in um, and they, they have a lot of repeats as well, like um, Focus and Raw Fury and other publishers seem to definitely have deals where their stuff either comes at launch, uh, Annapurna with Open Roads, like they get a lot of the same publishers that keep doing stuff, which then of course will also restrict more independent, smaller games from being able to get those deals too. Like there's probably a lot of factors. It's not that they're paying less. It's they've got like 500-ish games in the service. They don't want to overload it because that was actually one thing that hurt PS Now all the time because they just had so much shit that obfuscated the good stuff they had. They kind of reset that by getting rid of a lot and now focusing on trying to get more better stuff like nuance. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, There's more to that question. If you put those three things together, isn't the obvious answer to have the next gen Xbox simply do the following? Improve the Windows handheld controller experience to be more Xbox like, have the Xbox run full fledged Windows, uh, maintain Xbox library compatibility for the mm-hmm. next gen Xbox, and for devs who still want to compile Xbox versions of games. Am I crazy for thinking this? The yes. only reason I see it not happening yeah. 
is that the few oh, we love is you. that few would choose to buy from the Windows Xbox Temperature. store and Microsoft could lose a lot of money that way. If they stick with the Xbox OS route though, maybe they could get a five to ten percent cut from Steam, Epic sales versus zero percent cut on the Windows route. They can't the, have the games on a Windows and Xbox machine. The licensing doesn't work that way. If they want to make a portable yeah. PC, they can go and do that and they can make a great Windows handheld experience. Yeah, it'll be the Microsoft store. Your, yeah. Yeah. You will not have your Xbox library. They are making, as we understand it, a digital native handheld Xbox console. I don't get why people are struggling with this. It's, concept it's so just much. the headline it's about Xbox. putting different stores. They're just that's it's the, that's Xbox. where the problem is coming from. This, this when Microsoft does their portable, it will be an Xbox. That is what it will be. It will be an Xbox. It won't need that's play it. anywhere. Also, I've seen a lot of people saying, "Why don't they just use BattleNet instead of the Microsoft Store?" And it's like, no. Microsoft Store is the backbone of Play Anywhere, which is what everyone wants. Battle.net can barely support like 15 games. They're not going to add in three or 4,000 apps that are on the Microsoft Store. Like they're not rebuilding all these builds for Battle.net. Just we, we Microsoft Store is it. The Xbox app's a lot better than it used to be. It's also even getting kind of clobber like with having a big Xbox they game studios. That. Like they've got keep, a big keep button now. Keep improving the it's good Keep improving the Xbox handheld experience for the other devices, mm -hmm. but Microsoft's device will just be an Xbox. It you know won't they, be a PC. What handheld. they need is the thing that Kayasante had talked about, which is if they had their own launcher for a handheld mode that then just focused on games and you could customize it that way and you mm -hmm. could launch into it every time and you'd be done. This launcher just yeah. takes every store because they want the Microsoft store to have every store in it. No cut needed. You can just put your store there because then eventually we can make a Microsoft store launcher for our handhelds and everyone can use all your shit. No problem. You still make all your money, but it's great for us. Like, that's it. That's what they want for Windows handhelds. But the Xbox one, just an Xbox. It's just an Xbox. The simplest way to think of it is just take that Series S, which is already not much bigger than a Steam Deck. Just take that Series S, put two controllers on either harder. side of it, and stick a... St just think of the Series S with the X screen attached and a controller that handles on either side. Like, it's just an Xbox. And if it's that made by the it Surface people, it's going to look really nice. Jason Ronald oh, on yeah, those the teams. Surface team, ooh, ooh, sheesh. If, if the Surface team's behind it, mm -hmm. again... A, a panosless surface team I'm less enthused about. It's not always about. the rock star thing. Like, he can be a huge part of it and been a huge help. But, like, there's a lot of talented people. Also, the guy who took over for him, I know um, Tom Warren, and um, yeah, but... everyone's like, he's awesome. He's great at what he does. So, I think I think. No, be okay. I get it. But, but if you think about it, look at Apple, right? You like him since his name. Since Johnny Ive left Apple... Apple's design has stagnated somewhat mm. and they're leaning on old Johnny Ive designs. So hmm. you can say Johnny the rock star thing, but those rock, th those rock stars exist for a reason. So that's mm. why all, all I said was, I'm not saying surface team sucks. I'm just saying I'm less enthused <laughs> with Panos gone, but if they come out and the next surface book, whatever, whatever, but if, all future surfaces just essentially evolve the existing design and lean on those old design ideas, then, then yeah, Panos leaving has left a hole. Maybe. Anyway, skedaddle. This is the part where everyone can thank me for giving Nick the opportunity to talk about Australia. Right, I'm, going, I'm going to the toilet. I'll be right back. <laughs> this is actually really cool, this. I like this. Uh, the other day, Terrible Maps tweeted this image of Australia in a way Americans could understand. Do we think this is accurate or a truly terrible map? Now, I love this. P.S. Salute to John for gearing up for his Alien Isolation playthrough. Thumbs down for Nick as another month of failing his community challenge means another hour of Sea of Thieves. I didn't know I only had a month. I thought I had, like, the oh, year to do it. I imagine you do. I don't know. John stole my friggin... He stole my little icon for when the camera's yeah, off. Yeah, I know. I see that. That motherfucker. Now... Son of a bitch. This, this map... Are you showing the map on screen? Yes, Jesse? I am. I'm pissed. It's actually a little bit frightening. It's actually a little bit frightening how accurate that map is. I would argue that Victoria isn't quite New York. I, I would say split that. Don't split it in half, but like add a little brackets underneath and say New York with a bit of Chicago. Hmm. Melbourne is very like when my dad went to when my dad used to go to America for business trips. 
for work. He told me Chicago was as close to Melbourne as you can get in the US. Really corrupt and violent. He was saying Chicago was closer hmm. than New York. And I have to ask, I've never been um, to anywhere off the East Coast, so I have no idea. So I would say, because I, I, my immediate thought was the New York thing was accurate with Melbourne, mm. but there's also a bit of Chicago. So 50-50, 50-50, New York, Chicago, California for Sydney. How 100%. hipster is Melbourne? Oh, very. Yeah, because new, be new, new, now New York, incredibly gentrified hipster, like super uh, hipster. Okay. Old so New York in the 70s and 80s and 60s, like full-on disgusting, smelly, crime, awful city. And now it's like the oh, most okay. expensive goddamn oh, well, everything then, yes. everywhere. Then New York, then 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 to me the fifty fifty New York Chicago thing is perfect for Melbourne. Um, California for Sydney is great. I like that. That's a good one. California is about right. Alabama for Queensland, yeah, that, uh, yeah. That's... You're not from around here, are you, boy? Yeah, oh, uh, Alabama is about country. right. On time. Um, Texas, Texas for Western Australia. Uh, um, Austin is progressive, so Fremantle is progressive, I guess. Austin is, Texas is a, as redneck as it once was. Texas is a really weird mix of trying to wanting to be its own country. It's not really redneck. It oh, is so Tejas is that's extremely independently focused. They have their own power grid. They won't be uh, in a okay. national power grid. They're also extremely influenced by Mexico, which they are they border with a lot. Um, so they, they it ends up okay. feeling like its own little, and it's also one of the biggest economies on the planet. So it's probably not that part. Okay, so that's why that's probably the whole Texas wanting to be independent thing is probably why yeah. Texas. And then is you've WA. got a couple of oasises of progressive areas in Texas, like Austin, Florida, Crocs and Gators. Hmm. See, I, look. The, the only reason they've put Florida for the Northern Territory is the Crocs and Gators. That's like mm -hmm. the only reason. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't... Florida... Hmm. Is there a lot of meth yeah, up there? There's get... like not many people, right? Up there? There's not a ton of people not no. in the Northern Territory. So it's tough. So it's it ends up being like... fuck all the time. All the hot, it's hot areas as fuck all year round. for us have a lot of people. And you could say like maybe Arkansas or somewhere in the middle where it's very hot, but there's not a ton of people, but... Even there, it's more like rolling plains and not desert. Like Nevada and yeah, Arizona. Yeah, the Northern Territory is very desert, very desert, very... Death sparse. Valley, it's, yeah. maybe, could work because that's just a balls-hot, awful yeah. place where no one lives. Now, Ohio, Idaho, and Iowa, is that because they're all boring, nothing states where it's like mm -hmm. going back in time when you go yep. there? Okay, yep. then that's perfect for South Australia. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Because when I went to Adelaide, I went to Adelaide for a wedding. And the first thing I, like, I was there for two or three days and I was like, I feel like I've gone back to 1985 while mm -hmm. I'm here. Yeah, just ask it feels like a time warp. Grub. Yeah, They're it feels home. like I've gone into a time warp to 1985 in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. Like, there was no Sunday trading. We woke up Sunday morning thinking, oh, we'll go shopping. All the shops were closed. I'm like, what? Sunday trading has been a thing in Australia, in Melbourne, for like 30 years. Why is it not like this in Adelaide in twenty twenty in twenty eighteen or whenever it was that I went? It was just, and I wanted to go out late at night and have a coffee somewhere. Everything was closed, and I'm just like, "What is this place? It's just weird." So yes, that is a hundred percent accurate for South Australia, um, Oregon for Tasmania. What's Oregon's thing? Uh, super yuppie, hippie, also Pacific Northwest foliage, like just tons of trees and, I don't know. May maybe that aspect of it. But, like, in Australia, th the way we make fun of Tasmanians is, is that we basically allude to them being inbred. Okay, yeah. Oregon was a That's state founded on um, incredible racism. Pe people who live there now, it's... It's a huge part of it, and like just uh, maybe it's just the idiocy and inbred thing because Oregon was like a Ku Klux Klan state, like it was is pretty rough. Uh, okay. I know we we like to ignore that history in America a lot. Um, I don't know about okay. incest so much, but maybe just uh, 
Founded on idiocy. Oh, it's just a joke. It's just yeah. a joke about Tasmanians. I mean, it's that's... just a joke about Tasmanians and they love their cousins and it's just mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. And and it is very. It's always cold there. It's always cold mm-hmm. in Tasmania. Yeah, cold. In maybe summer, it's the cold it and rainy get... thing because it's very cold and rainy in the northwest of the U.S. Extremely rainy. Okay. Yeah, maybe then. I do love the New York one for Victoria. I love that we're New York because that's probably what I would have said. I would have yeah. said New York or Chicago for us. I like that. And California is so perfect for Sydney. It's so perfect. <laughs> that's great. Okay. Uh, John Titor. Hi, guys. New patron here. My question is around new Xbox hardware. With talks of newer, more powerful hardware being released sooner than Sony's next-gen PlayStation, why are some people so convinced this would help Xbox get market share back? The Xbox Series X is already more powerful than the PS5, but as Digital Foundry has confirmed, most developers develop primarily for PS5 as the lead platform, meaning usually the PS5 version performs better than the Xbox version in most cases, despite Xbox being more powerful. Yeah, power means nothing. Power means nothing. In a world where PlayStation is the mainstream console, these things only matter when PlayStation does it. Always keep that in the back of your mind. So if PlayStation ever gets the power crown back, then power will matter. Mm-hmm. But We're in the post-resolution the era power... until resolution yeah. matters. While PlayStation yeah. doesn't have the power crown, PlayStation... The, power only, the only way that it would matter, matter is if the power envelope is so much bigger that it brute forces the games to just automatically look better on every regard, regardless of optimization. There was that rumor, Insider Gamer saying, I think, what is going to be required to call a game PS5 Pro Enhanced, which was if it ups its native resolution enough, if it locks the 60 FPS mode that it didn't have otherwise, like they're going for the bare minimum, essentially, or if it just has new ray tracing features. So it's like for them, and those things are going to now really matter. Like, even if it's a... Oh, yeah. If it's a point... Like, we've seen it before where it's literally dead even or one the Xbox is slightly ahead in average frame rate, but then for some reason they just show the area where PlayStation's way ahead a few times and that becomes the narrative. Or the resolution in this scene is 20% better on PlayStation and then ignores that it's generally higher on Xbox. Mm. Like, people will always find a way to list war the way they want to. You You can take actual real data ignore the context around anything and then just say see not lying and ignore all the other context yeah. it'll never change sorry Abe. The, like i said the, the the narrative the narrative will always be will only matter when playstation does it it's that simple it, it just it is what it is so power will matter again if the playstation 6 is more powerful than the next xbox power will matter again and Digital Foundry won't have to invent ways for PlayStations to get wins on their versions because they'll just win because well, they'll be more powerful. Enough, they've they'll be moved res. away from the wins thing now, really. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Uh, okay. Well, it's because it was. it's just boring. These are so similar all the time, and then they show something 20% different, which used to be the entire friggin' point of old videos. This runs at 1080p native. This runs at 900p. And now this runs <gasps> at 1800p. This runs at 1260p. Who cares, though? Even though it's a massive difference compared to 900 yeah, yeah, to yeah. 1080. Like, it is a legitimate That's the irony of it, isn't difference. it? Yeah. The resolution gap is bigger now. Yeah. The, the resolution gap between PlayStation and Xbox now is bigger than it was last gen but now res doesn't matter does it why because playstation's not as powerful oh you can well everyone's so now resolution stuff. doesn't matter but it's like when you reconstruct from lower it looks worse and when you reconstruct from higher it's just the way it works but there's always a reason why things don't matter there's always a goal post that can be moved by whoever wants yep. to do it it just doesn't have to be it's not it's rarely ever the, the people doing the video, like they'll just do the video, they'll have their numbers, they'll talk about things, and people will highlight very specific things in those videos to console war mm. with. It's like, hey, look at hey, look at this scene, or oh, look at look at how uh, Dragon's Dogma works on Xbox compared to PlayStation, despite the fact you can't actually directly compare them because everything's simulated, so it's never one to one. But in this scene, which was similar. It was 45 FPS on Xbox, or, or it was uh, 25 on Xbox and 29 
on PlayStation and people will say, see, runs way better on PlayStation, even though it's that's not the story. You can't really tell because everything's freaking simulated. So it's goddamn near impossible to actually know how things are going one to one against each other. It's not that type of game, but people will they will find a way to be shitheads. Uh, like I, I don't envy Microsoft with next gen. Because it, it, if, if the rumors are true, and if all the rumors we've heard are true about them doing a portable as well as an under the TV box and how they're aiming for same specs for both and all that sort of stuff that we've heard, if all those rumors and everything are true, then it would be unlikely that the next Xbox would be as powerful as what the PS6 will be. So all of a sudden mm. they're going to cop it all gen about being weaker. I don't know. It, like it's just... I mean, the what? handheld would be a Series S. It, there's no way the box under the TV is going to be the same thing. Because the power envelope for the Series S is something you can't hit in a handheld now. But in a I couple of years, they'll be able to. But it's not like... I know the, the rumor was they're going to have the same focus for handheld. Spec. and It can't be. Yeah. Because then the main spec Why is not? a Series S. It's just a Series Correct. S. Correct. Yeah, that's the not main the, the main spec would be weaker. That's what I yeah, said. That's not, but their actual under the under your TV box is going to be a lot stronger than a Series X. So that's not going to be the case. There's no way. Might not be. No, there's no way. What it's if it's not, not? It's not going to be a Series what S. If, it's not? if the same spec, it might not be a Series S specifically, but it might just be a weaker than expected box to be able to get let the handheld keep up. The handheld's doing the Series S. It's not doing anything else. It's not. You don't have to hamstring we'll the other. You don't have to hamstring the other one because the whole point is you're running native 720p on a handheld or something like you're running. They've already underclocked the Series S. The Series S and the Series X are conservatively clocked. Their power envelope is a lot less than their power supply can give. And that is for a very specific reason. So the next freaking gen, first off, it keeps heating down, keeps costs down, all that stuff. They're already losing a ton of money. But the Series S power envelope is set in such a way to make it realistic for a handheld. That's the handheld spec is just the Series S moving forward. Because the PS5 is still going to get games for a very long time. They're not dropping the PS5. You, so it is literally going to be PS5, PS5 Pro, PS6 for if you're making a game on PlayStation. It's going to be a pain in the dick because of the way they code. And it's to the metal and it's not the way the GDK works, which tries to make the things like targeting a series s a series x and a series triple x like it's just it is easier with their setup so I, there's no way they they don't have to go weaker like they're already going to be targeting the series s but then the series x x x can be a lot more and super fancy with all their ai bullshit and the biggest technical leap we've ever seen know. as she said we'll see <clears throat> we'll see we'll see what if their handheld is just the Series S with one of those screens stuck on it and they just like bolt a controller in front of it and they give you a huge backpack okay with a battery? With I'd be okay with that. <laughs> the battery backpack. You've got like oh, the car God. charger battery just on your back and that's what you, you run it off around. With. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, that'd be fucking heavy. Whatever to get, whatever to get my portable. And it's like a whole, it's, it's a harness and it's just got the screen in front of your face and yeah. Whatever it takes to get my Fortnite and Rocket League at 120 on the go. Mm. Whatever it takes. Okay. <clears throat> Lee Layfield. Hey, all. Hope you're enjoying the Easter holidays. We created some cheesecakes in... Op we created some cheesecakes in opened Easter eggs this year. Extremely filling and tasty with the right toppings, of course. M&Ms. Mm. Crispy M&Ms, hopefully. Question. With all of the layoffs, closed studios, and sold slash acquired dealings lately, could you see anyone, two studios or publishers merging more than acquiring? The same way Square and Enix did, or Bandai and Namco. It's silly, but I'd like for Sega to join up with Nintendo, or Sega with Capcom, because they'd be the greatest publisher ever. P.S. I think Ubisoft is up next to close slash layoff people. Too many duds lately. Prince of Persia, Avatar, Skull, and Bombed. Um, oh, Sega and Capcom merger. Oh Sega and Nintendo would suck. Nostalgia overload. Nostalgia overload on Sega and Capcom. Mm. Oh, boy. It's like the Dreamcast. Like, they're just the Dreamcast publisher. Like That's just that's the whole Dreamcast library is Sega and Capcom. 
cycle. I don't know. Could we see a merger? Embracer with anyone. <laughs> Yeesh. Yeesh. Oh, Embracer. What a fucking write off. Embrace Fury. Merger with Raw Fury. Um, Ubisoft. One day Ubisoft would merge with Take Two. Ubisoft merged with Microsoft and be called Ubisoft. (laughs) (laughs) Ubisoft merge with Microsoft and call them uh, Tiny Squishy. I prefer (laughs) Tiny Squishy. Uh, Microsoft and Ubisoft. Yeah, I'm sure there's a funny joke name there to be had. Ubisoft. Um, you're small and soft. Micro and you be. That's what some of their employees said to other employees that got them in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Too many duds lately. Yeah, I hate that Prince of Persia wasn't massively successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we live in an industry, or we work in an industry, where the games media only really waxes lyrical about... But wait... Big but wait, games. hold on. If Microsoft just makes great games, they'll be no, fine. They'll be acknowledged, mm-hmm. remember? No. They just have to make great oh, they games. They haven't been consistent like enough. They haven't been consistent enough. Redfall was a 3 out of 10. Starfield mm. was a mid game 4. Yeah. No, it was not a consistent. 7. 7's not a bad game. Also, let's spend many months telling you how bad it is. Yep. Yeah. Let's not let's because ignore what, going that, over the last six years of Open Critic and Metacritic combined, where they're pretty much neck and neck with Sony and actual. Because that's critical appeal. Isn't that what Ubisoft's done? Ubisoft's made some great games lately. Mm-hmm. So why isn't it working wonders for them? Because that's apparently the answer. Everyone says just make great games. Isn't that it? It's that simple, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yes. That's what everyone keeps saying. That's what uh, one bad mother kept saying, and now he finally realized, oh, well, it's not fair, is it? No, like no, it's not. It's not as simple as just make great games. It's really not. Again, I'll keep going back to the Dreamcast and the Wii U, two of the biggest failure consoles in history that had some of the most incredible games on them, like the Dreamcast and Wii U. There are no two other consoles that disprove the theory. That exclusive sell consoles more than those two consoles. Oh, and arguably the GameCube. There, there are no other consoles that disprove that theory more. Like the Dreamcast library, especially I say across its first two years, it only lasted fucking two years. <laughs> had had much better games than the PlayStation Two did in that two year window. Didn't do jack shit for the Dreamcast. GameCube. Where do you think Resident Evil 4 started? Like the GameCube had an incredible library of exclusives. It even had an exclusive Metal Gear Solid game. The best Metal Gear Solid game. Meant jack shit. The Wii U. Its game library was so good that its games are being resold on the Switch and doing massive numbers. Didn't help sell the fucking Wii U, did it? Oh, but exclusive sell consoles. That's what everyone keeps telling me. It's exclusive. But what's not on the Wii U? Call of Duty. Fortnite. What wasn't on the Dreamcast? EA Sports games. Funny that, isn't it? Use your fucking brains, people. Whoa. That's what they're there for. I mean... Oh, it's just a bullshit myth. It's just a bullshit myth. It's asking quite a bit for asking most people to think. Again, ex- ex- exceptions to the rule, like the Switch, which doesn't have a much of the third-party content, but like people buy the Switch for the exclusives. As always, we've always said that there are exceptions mm-hmm. to rules. But exclusives alone just make up one part of why a console sells. Look at the Xbox One and PS4. The first two years of that generation, you're telling me people bought the PS4 for the games? Fuck it, spare me. That or console even didn't have any games for the first this two years. Generation and I loved for the Shadowfall. I loved Shadowfall. I was one of the only people that loved Shadowfall. That console had no games for the first two years. Why did it sell, though? Because Xbox One fucked up so hard. Even though Xbox One had Killer Instinct, Rise, Dead Rising, 
fucking Titanfall, Sunset. Like, oh my god, that that first year of Xbox One is one of the best first years you're ever going to see on a console. Did it mean anything in the end? No. Why? Come on, man. Enough. Enough stupidity, please. SJ Dub. Hey, John, Jesse, and Nick. Hi. I don't have a question this week, but I just wanted to say thank you for all of the work and content that you guys put into this community. I first heard about you guys some time ago on an Xbox Two podcast. Mm. Rand and Jez were probably making fun of Nick, Mm -hmm. but it got me curious to check out your podcast, and I've listened to every week since. I've also really enjoyed the new headlines show during the week. They help make my work days go by quicker, and they're really well done. I also wanted to shout out the community games night yesterday. I've mainly been playing single-player games lately, so it's been a while since I've played a game like that with a big group of friends. It was also a lot of fun, and it's something I hope you guys continue to do when you're not swamped with reviews. Nope, never doing it again. Keep up the great work, <laughs> SJ. Nope, hated every minute. Never doing it again. <laughs> thanks, SJ. Yeah, that's really nice. It's really good to and read. And thanks, thanks, Rand and Jez. Any publicity is good publicity, I guess. That's the yeah, Xbox yeah, sponsor. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Whatever, whatever sent you in this direction. <laughs> Thanks, Rand and Jez. Not only in this direction, but also being a patron. Fucking jerks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Laser Wolf. I have another hard-hitting question for everyone. Uh-oh. Burritos or tacos? Burritos. On the mood. Can I, can, can I say Burritos. neither? What? How can you not have a really good because burrito? Not, I'm not have... big on Mexican. Yeah, I'm not sh- big on Mexican. Bro, I'm some guessing of the best flavors. Australia doesn't have good Mexican food. That's yeah, That would be the reason not. why. It's like most of Europe. I'm not man. big on Mexican. I, have... If I'm have to pick between those two, I'm saying burritos. If I have to pick between if those two. If we ever but... get you to LA, you will then appreciate Mexican food. Get you I to love... Texas for some Tex-Mex. Like... I love some, some. I love a good burrito. You like chicken and steak. You know, refried brains. Brain? Uh, refried brains? Beans. Beans. Oh. Refried brains. <laughs> refried um, brains. Um, um, those are like lovely peppers. Oh, mm. Mm. Oh, I'm not into spicy either. Yeah, it's not, Mexican's not really about spice. It's yeah, you can flavor, choose though. to do spicy if you want, but good Mexican food is the the actual corn tortillas or cooked up shells if you're in America. Um, but like the um, actual Mexican food is delicious. I will say part of the problem is my first experience having Mexican wasn't the best. Like my mum made homemade tacos, I think, and I threw up. Mm. And so ever since then, I think I've just been very averse to Mexican. Everything I've heard about so Australian my, Mexican I, I food is mom. bad. It's very far away. I get it. But we, well, we have Guzmani Gomez down here and we have like other like sp- Specialist Mexican restaurants like Heco and Mexico, I think it's called, um, that have a few of them down here. I don't know. I've never been there because I'm always just hesitant to walk in the door. I went to Guzman de Gomez. Again, first experience, not very good. So now I like, don't. So, so that's twice now I've given Mexican a chance. I would say <laughs> if we tried horrible experiences the if first time. If we're in time. Germany, I'm definitely going to say don't. Let's not try and have German Mexican food. I saw. Josh Sawyer yeah. post a picture of it and it was like it looked like German food <laughs> cosplaying. <laughs> yeah, like be prepared for, for German food in Gamescom. Like uh, I'll have love, love our German brothers and sisters, but Do they have um, McDonald's in Germany? I, I actually didn't see one in Cologne from what oh, I remember. Really? Maybe I did. No, I I did. Okay, there is Google. One. Is there, there is one a McDonald's there is one. in but Cologne? We're definitely gonna make Nick eat a, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right and not butching it. A fine axle. There is McDonald's in Cologne. Yeah, I, I said that already three minutes ago. In um, tank, in trank gas, in Schilder gas, and some other one that I don't even want to try and pronounce. Yeah, Marcellenstraub. Marcellenstraub. It's, it's a very walkable city. Um, but yeah, the, we'll make you have a fine axle. With sauerkraut. Ooh. <clears throat> no, you got to try it, bro. You're in, you went in Rome. Come on. But we're not in Rome. 
Marine Cologne. Well, he's not going to have any money left because he's going to have bought himself like business class the business airfare. flights. Yeah, yeah, premium yeah. Business. yeah. 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 upgrade. I'm going to upgrade the flight to business class to make it bearable. Did, did you finally, I got to say, after last week's conversation, do you understand that the business will pay for the flight? Because it seemed very, very hard to get the that The economy through. flight. And if you want to pay for an upgrade, <laughs> sure. But the actual flight, like the flight in the hotel, good. If you want a better flight, you maybe you can pop in some money, but the business will pay yeah. for it. I'll upgrade it. I'll upgrade it to premium economy. So yeah, my body like actually an, survived extra grand. the flight. That's okay. An extra grand is fine. It's 14,000 Australian. <laughs> what is yeah. An extra thousand pounds. Uh, no, it was, a, it was an extra thousand Australian. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, that's fine. An extra thousand Australian is fine. I'm not going to do business class, but premium economy. <laughs> I'm doing business class. And, and Emirates. Champagne. <laughs> Emirates premium economy looks quite good. Emirates premium economy. It looks decent. Yeah, I can't guarantee what plane you'll be getting on. It'll probably be a Boeing. <laughs> Hopefully, all the doors stay on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Okay. Assassin Entertainment. Executive producer, Assassin Entertainment. Hello to John, Jesse, and Nick, the one shot wonder. That's to do with, I assume, SWAT. I think I speak for everyone last night when I say community gay night was a lot of fun and hopefully we do more in the future. Nope. My question is mainly regarding the current state of studios actually leaving their publishers. Toys for Bob, Saber Interactive and more recently Relic Entertainment have all decided to break out from their respective publishers and become independent developers. Should we expect to see more of this happen over the next few months or no? Also, if Embracer is selling off more studios, hopefully Microsoft can pick up Crystal and Eidos for God's sake. Selling of Gearbox to take two, regardless of how we feel about acquisitions, seems like a perfect fit, in my honest opinion, and so does Crystal and Idos joining Xbox Game Studios. Thank you all for your hard work. John, PS, PS John, if you need a squad made for Helldivers 2, you have but to ask us. Democracy for the win. Um, yeah, I mean, we all want Crystal and Idos, but I'm giving up at this point. Yeah, I, I just don't see Microsoft doing anything in the acquisition space for a while and idos or crystal is tied up with tomb raiders deal with amazon so that that's yeah. a ton of money and a ton of responsibility that they have to contractually see through they're also tied up with xbox they're also tied up at idos with xbox with fable so those two companies blame abk yeah blame abk for everything now you no. see see here's the beauty of it right and why i always get proven right in the end Everything you guys are complaining about now, remember how I kept saying, I was saying, I don't want them to acquire ABK. I don't want them to acquire ABK. Now you're all seeing why. See what it's led to? It's led to shit. No. It's led to nothing. What are you... It's given us nothing. What would IDOS and Crystal have done by now? I don't know. Been cool studios that Microsoft would own. They're not prim- if they're not that pulling money in, it doesn't Cool help. games for them. Could eventually. Who cares? I don't care about the financials of a trillion dollar company. I care about the games I get to play. I don't give a shit about the rest. Like, ABK's given us nothing. And it's costing us so much. We only just got Diablo on Game Pass. Just now. Like,. I did notice that talk about the achievements not being in Diablo. <laughs> why, and then it, Yikes pe- was like, blah, 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 blah. It's like, why would they make an entire new build of the game to be on the Microsoft store that has to then tie into everything and tie into it? So I was like, it's already there in Battle.net. The hard work is making Battle.net work because then in the future, everything that's already coming to Battle.net, which is where those games have their main player base then just works through the Microsoft store. Like it's just, it's so much easier and more logical for that. The only thing you don't get by default is cross buy. You do have cross save, cross play, cross progression and microtransactions. It's all already there with the battle net account. So PC players don't care about. So have they worked out? Have they worked out how to trigger your game pass subscription activating on battle net? Yes. So now when you go to install Diablo, Or when you go to install Diablo, it then pops up and says you need to install Battle.net. And then it immediately will tag your Xbox account into your Battle.net account if you haven't already done that. Anyone who's ever played Overwatch, Call of Duty, 
or Diablo, which is most of the people who have played an Xbox, have already done that. So it's just installs, you're done, and it works. And PC players, by default, do not care about achievements. So no one gives a shit about Steam achievements. They don't care about Battle.net challenges. They don't care about Xbox sure. achievements. That's just not a PC thing. That's a console players looking at it thing. And it's like the only negative was no cross buy. So if they can figure that out, since it is their own thing now, cool. Just the game cross buy would be nice. Outside of that, it's way more sense to just be through Battle.net. It's already there. It already I'd works. I'd argue cross save is even more important. Yeah. Than and, that, and that's that's been there for a long time. Like the, the Battle.net integration. I'm saying with like Battle.net. Yeah, every battle. So the main things are Call of Duty, Overwatch 2, Diablo 4. They all already have full cross save, full cross play, full cross progression on like battle passes and stuff. That's oh, all already they? a oh, thing. Okay, then. Yeah, that, that's what I said. When you log there, if you've ever played Call of Duty, you've already tied it into a Battle.net account. If you've ever played Diablo 4, mm. from the instant it came out, you already had to tie it to a Battle.net account. And Overwatch has been like that for like five years or something. They all automatically mm, sync. Mm. Okay. Cool. Fuck ABK. <laughs> Good old Colin. Uh, <laughs> happy Easter, John, Nick, and Jesse. Well, Monday is April Fool's Day. So I was thinking that mm. on that day, you might want to host a special podcast with your cats as the hosts. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would attract a lot of subscribers. Of course, you need the right mix of personality for a podcast to per succeed. Personality. So please describe, please describe what personalities your cats have. Do your cats reflect your own human characteristics, or do they have totally different personalities? By the way, still in Japan, returning home today. A couple of snapshots. Ooh, he's got some Xbox advertising there. Man, my cat. I don't like my cat. That's, like that's yeah, so I guess it I guess it reflects your personality there. No, it's not. She's actually like But you just said your cat's really annoying. She, but she's nothing like she's still nothing like me though. Like trust me, my cat oh. does not reflect she my She barely ever talks she about herself. She'd leave, she'd leave me alone if that's the case. I'm not a cat person though. I'm a dog person. So you're never gonna see me liking a cat in that way. Like the only reason and this is the part that is me if you know me the only reason i got a cat was because i assumed that a cat would be low maintenance the kids wanted a pet i don't have a house big enough for a dog so i'm like i'll just get a cat because they're low maintenance they keep to themselves i don't give a fuck about you i'll get a cat and i got this cat that was already six months old it wasn't a rescue but she was like an adoption cat, and no, so many nice things her in this house. She was six months old. All he wants, yeah, is I know. Friggin' box, box. Yeah, I know. They're so weird like that. Um, but I saw this cat. No one was taking this cat because everyone just wanted the kittens, and she was six months old. So I felt bad. I thought, okay, well, the kids want a pet. I'll get a cat because they're low maintenance. Turns out that I picked the most high maintenance cat in existence. Like, she molts like crazy. She might be celiacs. She has this skin condition. Like, I just got the most high-maintenance cat on Earth. Somehow. And she just annoys the shit out of me. Wow. Well, I've got <clears throat> I've got two. I lost two to being hit by cars, which makes me sad. And I had to bury You want them. mine? No. You want um, my cat? No, I don't, I don't. I'm I'm nervous to get more cats. I'll I've bring her with me when no, I fly okay. over. I'll bring her with me, I'll pass. and you can take her. Ginger and white cats are notoriously like complete dickheads most of the time. Um, but yeah, I've got two. She's black a well-behaved cat. One is twenty. She's well-behaved. Twenty years old. She just wow walks around. She's kind of half deaf. She forgets when she's been fed, and she lets out these mournful meows in the middle of the night, like. And you're like, whoa, that's really freaky. And then you've got Boots, which is very much like Jesse's cat, to be honest. Black and white, complete doofus, very talkative, very cuddly. Not a lap cat, though. Um, but yeah. No, that's, see, that's mine it. loves being... My, my wife refers to our cat as my girlfriend. Wow. 
She only wants to deal with me when I lie on the couch. Whoop, she's straight up on and then bang, straight there and won't leave and talk like a wicked. She'll come into here because this is obviously where I work as during the day. As much as I love community questions, I would just like to remind everyone, especially for anybody over here, that daylight savings has kicked in and you're now cruising me right up until three in the morning. So please <laughs> keep fucking talking. Uh, I'm fine with it. She comes here and then I'll walk in the door and she'll start talking to me. She'll be like, meow, meow, meow. And I'll be like, what do you want? And she's like, wah, 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 wah. and she like full talks to me. Yeah. That's, she sounds great and you sound like an cool asshole for not boy, loving her. For sharing. But also, yes, we own a she, lot of nice she's stuff. She's a really well-behaved cat. Yeah. She's a very well-behaved cat. Whenever I've taken her to the vet, they love her. The vets absolutely love her. They're Last like, question. Oh my God, she's so well-behaved and... Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, yeah, she's a good cat. It's just, I can't be fucked. Wow. Okay. You sound like a, you, you sound like a monster after that story. <laughs> yeah. That, my I cat's lovely, I was but I fucking guy. hate it. My cat's incredible. <laughs> she's the best. She's so nice. Guy. Everyone loves her. Fucking cunt. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> God. I, I never said I was the good guy. I said I, I don't uh, want my cat anymore. Yes, we have a lot uh, of very nice executive... cat stuff, and he's just in that box all day. I don't know what to do. Executive producer Jordan White. What's Team Blick? What? What's Team Blick? Team, team B L I C. No idea. Okay. Hey guys. While I was playing Tales of Arise for the first time recently, there was a game feature slash component that made me audibly say, Holy shit. And that is the ability to add conditions. If I do a specific thing, my party will do another specific thing. If my health is under 50%, my party will prioritize healing me. When I started playing Unicorn Overlord, I was ecstatic to see the same element in that game as well. I'm having a great time playing both, taking my time to strategize the best conditions for my style of play. I would love to have this feature expanded and see other developers implement that into their own games. I heard Dragon's Dogma 2 AI allows for pawns to learn how you play, but what if you could literally program that yourself? Any game that uses companions would be better with that feature. Sports games could let you create actions, like if a specific player has the ball, move to this area. Simulation games could allow you to create automated systems for NPCs or other hands-off tasks, like creating morning routines in The Sims. Plus, the community could really get in-depth with creating their own unique conditions and sharing them with others. What are your thoughts on that? Do you like that component when playing those games, or did you absolutely hate it? Side note, I finished the June book trilogy in less than a week. Watched June 1 the next day, June 2 in the nice. in IMAX the day after, and holy shit, it was better than I expected. But it's a major shame they didn't portray Alia, Alia. Alia at all in child form. She's the best character in the entire series. She'll be around. I can't talk to these games. I haven't played them. Same. Tales of Arise or, I haven't played Tales of Arise or Unicorn Overlord. I'm too Tony lazy. Tony was here. I don't like having to set things up myself. If I can, if they're really good by default, and then I can customize them, I might be more interested. But um, I've also I've I've readjusted my camera, and I and I propped him up on another box. So watch him jump out. <laughs> one of the one uh, chat have been like, "Wow, he's just discovered JRPGs." <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the thing. I'm not a JRPG player myself. Those. Those mechanics sound cool in theory, but again, I don't like to do a lot of work. Like, that's part of the reason I don't like State of Decay 2. That just felt like another job. And they made so it I'm easier, like... so you don't have to know. You can make all the job stuff perfunctory. You don't have to focus on it. Nice. Yeah. Maybe. But, but yeah, June. June is fucking incredible. And June t June 1 was incredible. June 2 was uh, a, a cinematic transcendent. It is experience. the best IMAX movie ever made. By far. It, it is phenomenally good. It June should be second next flick. But uh, it won't it be. Should, June 1 and 2 should be a second next flick thing. Along yeah, with Late Night 100%. with the Devil. I watched Argyle last night. God, <laughs> Terrible. Christ. It was so poor. I, se I expected so much. It was more okay. From I expected so much okay. more from that director. But it's it part of the like Kingsman universe. And, yes, yeah. which I discovered during the end credits. I didn't oh, know. <laughs> I was so disappointed with it all. It was just like, meh. It was a big pile. It was meh. okay. Again, I think the problem is because it got bagged so much, I went in with really low expectations. And I was like, that was okay. 
it was it had its fun moments, and I like Sam Rockwell. The, the worst, the worst offending thing that that film made. Spoiler alert! Um, at the end of the film, they talk about how she's being, and it's set now. They talk about how she's being controlled by this tune, which is a Beatles song that was only mm-hmm. fucking released last year. So how did they program her five years ago? The whole end sequence is that new Beatles song. Now and then, I miss I didn't know you. What that song was? I yeah, it's a it's a Beatles was. song that was written way back in, and it never it never released because John Lennon died, and they didn't have the technology to do it. But then yeah, after but the, the whole division, Peter Jackson thing, the division got a hold of it. Oh fuck off! That's <laughs> division fuck off! The division got a hold I mean, of that. It was that song. kind of decision of picking that track. I was like, you've just completely pooped. You just what? What is that about? I don't know. Anyway, I, didn't, I couldn't film. even tell that it was a specific song. It just sounded like a random thing. It was a classic Beatles track, mate. From a, a new year ago. Beatles, a new Beatles a classic song that sounded from a year ago. It, and it, honestly, it sounded it sounded like it had just been plucked straight off one of the classic albums, dude. It was, I thought it the was, soundtrack in Argyle was pretty good. It, the film was meh. Mid. When I Mid. When, Seven when, out I, when 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 Rockwell first got to her on the train. And started fighting that entire train full of agents. And um, what's its face played by Sylvester? Mm. I was like, okay, I like this sound. And you walked into this. I know you want to go to bed. I, know, I, know. I was like, I do want to go to bed. Soundtrack. I'm going to stop it. I'm just, I'm not engaging. Anymore. I watched Poor Things as well. Don't care. Good for you. Cool story, bro. Poor anyway, that's the end of the show. Uh, we'd like to thank all of our patrons for director. submitting their community questions. Uh, we love you guys. Um, a lot of lot of paragraphs, a lot of paragraphs for the clocks going forward. Yay, three a.m. is approaching. Um, and for any patrons watching, we are going to have this week's patron post up early for community questions because mm-hmm. we have a special guest next week. Yeah. So we are going to have. I'm going to put up the patron post for those questions up much earlier than normal and it won't be up as long like, pay attention a lot, it, it goes up a lot a lot earlier and we oh, yeah it goes up and then comes down what once we've got a bunch because we got to yeah. submit them yeah yes yeah. and we need them to be succinct <laughs> two or three <laughs> sentences do you no. mean whatever do you mean nicholas surely they a can write bit, entire paragraphs a little bit just a little bit why do you hate our patrons usual? so much i just do the the a little bit a little bit <laughs> tighter and more a little bit tighter than normal would be nice um very delicately put just mate. letting you know in advance we can but say who the guest is of you guys yeah we can say can who we? Guess. who's the guest i guess so oh, i don't know if i don't want to pronounce his name wrong because I, I don't actually know how to pronounce it. I don't want to say mm. it wrong. Like I can I can say it how I think it's pronounced, but I've never heard it said, so I don't know I, how it's pronounced. I think you you've pronounced it just fine, dude. You'll be fine. Abubakar? Yeah, Abubakar Salim, right? Abubakar Salim. Yeah, that, but I just that's, don't know if that's the right way of pronouncing it. I think that's perfectly fine, mate. Um, okay. Who is the voice the of head, head of? Yes, head of Surgeon Studios, currently making Zao Kinzira. Yeah. Tales Kinzira, of Kinzira. Tales of Kinzira Zao. 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 I'll be reviewing. Yeah. It. Yep. So looking forward to having him on. It's going to be very similar uh, in terms of uh, general flow and cadence as the episode we had Grant on mm. um, from Delala. So mm. if you want your, your game dev and voice actor anecdotes, uh, jump right in. It'll be fun. Yep. Um, yeah. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope there's no crazy news. But if there is, fret not, crew. Headlines will cover it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yep. So do not worry. We got your back. Yep. Um, yeah, expect plenty of previews at the early start of the week. Have a happy Easter. Eat loads of chocolate yes. if you celebrate. Happy Easter um, to everyone. You know, props to Judas. Thanks, bro. Happy and, resurrection, uh, Jeebus. Yeah. We'll see you next Great time. Great Easter's not till May. Oh, okay. Well, you can mm. tell us all about yeah. it then. Yeah. <laughs> See you next week, folks. Ciao for now.
from Reese. Yeah? Oh, they can hear me? Okay. okay. The I apologize to Reese. I apologize to Reese who had a super chat. As someone who <laughs> self published his own hardcover art book, I can testify called Koi. The shipping costs got me too. Ha 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 ha. So, yes, yeah. Reese. Sorry, we forgot your super chat. Yeah, Sorry. we love you. Thank you. Sorry, okay, now we're, now we're going now. Bye. Ciao for Sorry, now. Bye. Again.